welcome everybody. Um, adjustments to the agenda. Carl, I'd just like to add one thing on uh, just a short thing on uh, configurations for next year. I just want to make the board aware of a little glitch we have there. I'm sorry, I'm having trouble hearing you, Bonnie. Uh, configure grade configurations at Rochester for next year. Uh. Okay. okay. So just an update to the board. Oh, that's an add to the agenda? That's a, a discussion item? Yeah. We'll call that 9.6. And... Amy, do we need an executive session after the uh, meeting or not? Um... Okay. Um, alrighty then. Uh, so I understand uh, that, uh, Lindy, you're going to be timekeeper. I'm ready. Okay. I have some rough ideas on times, if people are interested. <laughs> we are, of course, interested. I'm proposing times. Okay. Uh, you tell me if it's enough or too much or how you want to adjust. Um, public comment, I had about 10 minutes. I think that's what we did last time. Mm -hmm. Or was it longer? You can say 10, sure. Okay. Uh, consent agenda, agenda, five minutes. That sounds right. Board comment, 15 minutes. Sure. Okay. Uh, and then each of the reports, well, excuse me, the superintendent's report, five minutes. Tara, I didn't know if you had more, so I gave you 10 minutes. Okay, you need that. Five would be fine okay. for that section. I want to make sure. And then principal's report, five minutes as well. Mm -hmm. um, and then policy review, 20 minutes. Okay. Budget discussion, 20 minutes, which would transition into budget timetable of 10 minutes. Okay. Uh, building committee update. Uh, 25 to 30 minutes? I don't know how. No, I won't do no. any more than 10. I would say five. 10 would be fine. 10 would be fine? Okay, I'm sure what the... How much budget discussion will... Uh, be very, sure. be it's very long, 10 minutes at the most. Okay. Okay. Uh, annual report committee check-in, 10 minutes. Um, marquee, 10 minutes. That's probably five minutes. Oh, That's probably five minutes. Okay. And then 10, 15 minutes for grade configuration. That's probably 10 minutes. 10 minutes. Okay. Okay. And that's as far as I went. We need to add this um the uh, <clears throat> trustees letter on. Oh yes, that's a good point. That's an action. That's an action item. Okay. Let's make that 10.1. Trustees letter that can be five minutes. Trust me, letter five minutes. Yep. Okay. Hello. No. All right. It's a roll. I'm not chair right here. The big thing is, is that it doesn't matter. You don't have to. It's a budget. You don't have to have the check in your hand. Um, uh, there are there are there are there are I got it down. Yeah. Thanks. Oh, so <laughs> action item. All right. We have an action item. Ten point one is trustee letter. Yeah. Okay. Uh, with those times aside, um, I was just this up to half an hour, 45. An hour 45. We're out of here in under two hours if we stick to this timetable. Um, all right. Uh, public comment. I'll wait till the second public comment. Okay. okay. Um, consent agenda, I would entertain a motion to approve the minutes from November 5th uh, as presented. I honestly didn't get a chance to read them, sorry. Wayne, do you have an agenda? Do I have an agenda? No, I did not get offered one. Would you like one? Do you have it? I'll come to you. Oh, 
while she reads the minutes, we can entertain a uh, motion to uh, uh, accept them in an open discussion. So moved. Do we hear a second? Okay. A motion has been made and seconded to approve the minutes of uh, November 5th regular meeting. Any discussion? Uh, hearing none, all those in favor signify by saying aye, or do we still need more time to read? Uh, I'm good. I'm good. Okay. All those in favor signify by saying aye. Aye. The minutes of November 5th have been approved. Uh, board comment. Surprisingly uh, uh, quiet. Perhaps, uh, perhaps we should have uh, JD be having an hour late all the time. <laughs> no. Which was mean. I apologize, JD, and to those of you watching at home. That was that's yes. That's that's why I immediately immediately retracted my comment or amended it, or clarified it to be humorous. She would say the same thing. So, hearing no other board comment, uh, let's move right into uh, the reports. Bruce. Um, we um, received um, special ed money uh, about a week ago, and uh, Tara and Deb. I'm sorry, can you just speak up? I'm having trouble hearing you. I said, yeah. we received the special ed money, which was from the fourth, the last quarter of last year uh, in the spring, and we've been waiting for this. Usually it comes out on the 15th of, around the 15th of September. This time it was two months late. Why that's important is because it impacts any surplus you might have if there's money spread uh, from the SU to the districts by proportion. So let's say that um, you uh, your 10% of the SU you would you would have a 10% share if there was special ed money that came out. Uh, we got a, pro a little over six hundred thousand dollars, I think. Um, but it, we, Tara and Deb, quickly noted that it was not all that we deserved, and we refiled with them for an additional amount of money. I won't even say because we don't know whether they've approved it not yet or not. But I guess suffice it to say, uh, we weren't satisfied. They also told us that it would be at least three weeks four weeks actually at that point to hear from them as to what it was going to be. So if you wonder why things have been held up in the audits and things, it's because we just don't have the full picture until things like this come out. We don't know whether your uh, your surplus is solid, you you know, a lot of things that, that uh, are kind of in the balance. So I was complaining about this at the uh, full board meeting the other night, and the board asked me what help I needed to be able to, there have been a lot of things like this that have come to life. One was what went on this summer with your, uh, your the information on, on students, uh, student counts and tax taxes. So I, after the meeting, I said, well, I will go up the chain and see what I can do about at least letting people know the things that are bothering us about our relationship with the AOE. And uh, so I basically called Jeff Francis, who's the head of the organization that I belong to, the Superintendents Association, and I said, Jeff, how do I get these things in front of what we call the trustees of the superintendents? These are delegates basically throughout the state that represent us in front of the AOE and different things like that. He said, what I want you to do is encapsulate five things that are bugging you about our relationship and put them down in a list. And I'm going to pass this around. This is the list we came up with. Uh, I have sent that to Jeff Francis today, and I guess <laughs> I'm the only one that's done this. So. Um, I guess I'm going to be in front of the trustees with the secretary Good. talking about what these things are. I, I'm concerned about our dialogue with him. I'm concerned about the fact that we don't seem to be take, uh, 
uh, get any get much feedback or be taken uh, seriously. Uh, so there are five on there. They're broken down. Uh, we sat and we we basically tried and the SEER reports on there, which is the special ed expenditure report. Uh, what's on there is also the concern um, related to um, Brad not getting back to us. Um, and uh, we were also concerned about the lack of clarity around issues because it depends on who you go to, what kind of, what opinion you get about what, you know, what the information is. Uh, so I've got something on there that speaks to the concern about not having the capacity at the AOE to be able to address a lot of our needs. You might want to scroll down a little bit. Yeah, so that yeah, it's, I think that's all we're extremely important. We need to really push them on this because we, we've got incorrect numbers and with our um, equalized pupils and lack of communication about it. Then now with our special ed being incorrect, potentially incorrect numbers. And it's very concerning that it's, it's the same individual as well that's in charge of all of this. And it seems to be, you know, that he's quite overwhelmed. He's not addressing our needs. So on um, December 13th, I'm apparently going to sit in front of the trustees with the Secretary of Education and go down through this list. Good, good. Uh, and we'll see where that goes. I don't, I don't know whether anybody else has done this, but I'm. I got to a point where I was tired of complaining, and uh, felt that we needed to go a little farther than that. And uh, so, if you see anything on there, I mean, I've already sent it, but I wanted to make sure all of you knew about it. Uh, I think it pretty much talks about the things that we've been talking about here and at the full board and the other boards. So uh, the special ed money, like I said, was two months late, yeah. which holds up your your budgets. Uh, Did they give any reason why it was too late? No. <laughs> That's part of the problem is. Didn't Deb say that? Well, they're, they're, I think it's larger, it's, maybe. I don't know. Well, they lost a bunch of staff that was handling it before. And so by default, it fell on to Brad James's plate as well. So he had to learn the whole ins and outs of the special education program before he could take action. And they keep spreading him thinner and thinner. Thinner and thinner. Yep. You know, get the other things. He's yeah. a good man, but he's not that good. <laughs> you know, you can only too. use somebody to their capacity. So. You know? were, there, were there any, I mean, sort of following up on this, were there any consequences for that? Remember that magic number that was so late? It was May, it was supposed to have it in right. you know, There's a lot of statutory deadlines that the agency of education has missed in the past year. And is anybody doing anything about that? I think they're They're saying there. sorry. I am. Is that sort of what this is about? Because, yeah, that was sort of a big yeah. deal. And then it just seems like nobody really, it's like, they broke the law. And right. nobody ever really seemed to do anything. They hold us to a standard. Yeah. We We've like, got to do everything yeah. by them, or they cut off our financing, and they seem to not have any, any consequences. Debbie Matthews said that with the um, uh, special ed um, report, this it has to be reported to them by a certain date, or every day afterwards you get fine. Hundred dollars a day. Hundred dollars a day for not reporting, but yet they are were a month or two months behind with being able to get back. So. So that we can't find them. I know we get the yeah <laughs> that's true. Well, well thank you. I think that. This is great. Thank you. Well, well thank you for stepping up. What we need to do. And, I'm over here. I gave you a call. Oh, Sam, yeah, Digger. Hey, Andy. Well, no, that's not politically. That's the, I'm not going to be aggressive. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. yeah. Come, come. 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 Further on the AOE, the two, one thing I had on my thing to talk to you about is December 1st, they are supposed to release the allowable tuition rate for the prior year. Sean Cusano, who handles that at the AOE, has advised they will not meet that deadline. So I have to send, again this year, I have to send notification out to all of our receiving, or I should say sending districts, 
that once the allowable tuition rate is released, that I will be billing them the difference if it meets their statutory requirements between the 3% and 10%. Haven't quite figured that formula out yet, stay tuned. But yes, so I just want you to know that I do have to send that notice out. So when it does happen, we will be <coughs> so within the SU and any sending districts outside of the SU, the difference between the announced versus the allowable tuition rate that's set by the AOE. Announced versus, now. Announced versus allowed? Allowable. Yep. Allowable. Could you just help me with those definitions, please? Announced is the uh, tuition rate that you as a board set in January you. that you're going to charge for your tuition. And then once everybody gets their stat books completed and all the statewide tuition is reported up to the Agency of Education, they calculate some formula that tells us what the actual allowed tuition rate is. And then you can either bill or pay back the difference if it's if we charge too much or we charge too little, there's a, a magic number between 3 and 10% that I haven't quite got my head around 100% yet. So. If it's under 3%, they call it a wash. Yeah. If, it's, if, it's, if it's over that, you, know, you, get, to, you, you get to either uh, bill back or uh, have, to return, have to return. And you can't funds. go over 10%. Correct. You're not, you know, if, if, if they're 10, more than 10% off, they say something must have gone horribly wrong. Yeah, and I know in the past, uh, when we had a high school, Rochester had some serious uh, political issues when a bill back ended up happening. So I would like us to caution away from it, any type of bill back. Yeah. Bill back. That, 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 means, that means that, oh, we didn't, we didn't charge you quite enough for you sending your kids up, so we need to charge you more, even though that's months later. Yes, yeah, a year later. That is so a year year year. Year. Like the announced yeah. tuition rate when they set, the allowed tuition rate when they set it is for FY19. Okay. So it's already done and it's already passed. Done. Right. And like last year, the FY18 wasn't released until July, and then they revised it again in August. So the, as, a, as a supervisory union or any district, like we received notification yesterday from Addison Central that they will be doing the, once the allowable tuition is released, that they will be invoicing or refunding. So they've already That's sent it. out their notice. I expect Harwood, any day, because they, you know, they're the same way. Can I ask a quick question? Why do they still list Rochester High School in that, on that page? Because the state hasn't updated any of that stuff yet. Even, even in the 1920, they still have it. They just leave it. Yeah, I've had this conversation multiple times in the last two weeks. Because I, I still have to report everything yeah. individually through our old buildings because the state systems still aren't updated for the merged districts. Thank you. I'm sorry. Sure. Sure. No, thank you. Thank you. Um, um, it's actually sure. confusing for our and Just a comment I'd like to make because I'm fairly, I, I didn't hear Bruce make it and I'm fairly sure Tara's not going to make it either. Um, the other thing I think that I would like the board to just be aware of is the um, additional volume of work each of these missteps on the part of the AOE causes the business office. There are times when Tara is actually doing a job twice that she's quite capable of doing once if she had the right number. Mm -hmm. So I just want to make transparent the fact that um, it's our folks that we work with every day that are trying to make up for these errors that are yeah. coming out of Montpelier. Yeah, well, and it's interesting because I'll, maybe I'll say it now. I was going to save it for the budget discussion, but I was I was somewhat disturbed by the, the email that Bruce sent out yesterday where he said, hey, by the way, um, there's this AOE deadline that's coming up. No one can email Tara from Wednesday till Monday. And I understand what you're saying about the AOE, but I, I also think that it's very important that, especially if we're not getting support from Montpelier, that we understand that these things need to be done right and we pay way too much money in, in second audits in you know, additional additional efforts to try to clean things up and move things around and find, you know, your phantom deficit and my phantom surplus and all that, that really I think that as we look at the budget uh, the budget discussion, we really need to be really frank about what we need in the central office to support her, to support her because if it's, you can't talk to her about a business manager role because she's cafeteria lady for four days. Well, me I mean, I know that's making it simple, but we really need to, I think, make sure that we are producing a central office budget that funds the functions that we need to have completed successfully so that we're not losing money or wondering if we ever should have sent that money to Montpelier in the first damn place. Well, you guys, you guys have approved us looking for extra accounting help. So we are, 
moving in that direction, it's hard to find. And mm -hmm. so we're waiting to find the right person, not just dancing with anybody, but... Uh, yeah, I understand that's, it, it, it's reactionary. Well, the, the, the thing about Tara's quarantine, as she's been calling it, uh, is because I got a phone call from the food service people at the AOE and said, if you guys don't meet these deadlines, we're going to start taking money away. And I said, oh, well, we don't want that happening. So, you know, we were given a, a deadline by the 20th of December, and it's hard and fast. I mean, there's... Sure, so no, and that's, and that's fine, but you're reacting again to that problem. And so you're saying, okay, well, Tara can't do business office stuff because she has to do that. I think, and again, right now, the accounting help that we're getting is we're paying Ron's firm a top dollar for, for, for consultant accountants that, that, you know, are kind of, what's the estimate of how much that's going to cost us right now? They're still working through the initial audit, but my expectation is there will be at least an additional fifteen to $20,000 built from them for the extra time that they put in. That's just me. They haven't okay. given me a concrete number on that. Sure, they're they're still not, and, on, and are they working on, are they working on time and materials, or are they working on a bid? They're working on time they, and materials they, at this point, Yeah, right? they sent us amount, and he was, for, and I don't quote me off the top of my head, I think it was around $48,000 was what they had projected for our audit to cost for the FY19 audit. So what they're doing is as they bill us for time for their staff, that's coming off of that, and then once that money's gone, then we'll sure. get a supplemental. But you're, but you're, you're basically t telling me that we're gonna pay about 50% more I, that's uh, my in, in expenses. And if you think about that, we could have hired someone for a year and have them sorting out all sorts of problems for that same $50,000 we're paying in catch-up money. And that's where I think, and we always say, oh, we don't want to hire any more people. We think we can get, we, we think we can get by. We and we don't, and we do things like saying, well, the business manager can't talk for four days. And I understand that, and I appreciate that forthright decision and you not trying to burn the midnight oil or do it all or try to cover everything. And I, I'm, I'm, really, I'm really glad Bruce took the horns to say, let's, you know, let's lock, let's quarantine you, as it were. <laughs> well, but we need, to, we need to really consider the, the, the level of staffing and the complexity of what we're being asking three people to do. What, what's been going on in Tara's life is that she's been taking all this home and, and crowding out family time, and I don't want her to do that. Nope. I don't think it's healthy. I don't think it's so going to help us in the long run. And I made a decision. I She gets bombarded all day long with emails, phone calls, people walking in, walking off the street. She doesn't know they're coming. They want answers. And all of you guys need information. But we know that. I, I'm. I think the cross point, and, and I've worked for a number of school districts, seldom does anybody ever advocate for the central office staff. They advocate for schools because you, you see you see the PE teachers, you see the music concerts, you see the reading teachers. If there's ever cuts to be made in personnel, they frequently come from two places, maintenance or central office. There's nobody really advocating for central office. And I was glad to hear Carl say we need to look at what does the central office need for staffing in order to do its job. The other quick comment I'll make is to Amy's point. It is appalling to me that if Tara doesn't finish certain stuff by December 20th, we're going to start losing money. But the AOE can be two months late, yeah. and we don't. And there's no what do I want to say penalty or consequence or whatever. So I'm glad that's on your list, Bruce. And I, I would I would encourage you to make that a very strong point. Um, well, I'm be, they may saw off the limb that I'm saying. <laughs> well, I was just going to thank Tara. I mean, it just, everything that you were taking on, and it was so difficult to begin with, and really I kind of cheered when leave her alone and let her do what she needs <laughs> yeah, yeah, to yeah. do. I understand that. I'm sure if there was an emergency, we could have gotten to you, but you're really doing a phenomenal job. Thank you. Oh, absolutely. Thank you very much. Absolutely. Bruce, can I ask you, um, I've seen the advertisement for the accountant positions in the Herald. Where else are we average School spring, I would assume. Can and it's been picked up on Indeed. Yep, yeah, Indeed. Can we do seven days? Um, I know seven, I mean, yeah, if we'll you don't, put it doesn't, anywhere, doesn't we'll sound put it room. anywhere except maybe the Boston Globe. I mean, <laughs> yeah, I mean, you know, I don't I know. Mean, yeah, it was in the Valley Herald, Indeed, and then School Spring. Yeah. And then I have feelers out through as well, but now there's we also want. four other districts that are looking for the same positions that we are too. So. I think um, just a scarcity. Yeah, mountain time. Mountain just a time, bigger net. Time. Okay. We're on standard. Standard. I don't know. Maybe we do have a couple bites. Yeah, I got one resume the other day that 
She had a lot of, she has a, a very strong accounting background, not necessarily in fund accounting, which is what we do, but she has a really strong accounting background. So that was my first really excited one that I saw. So. Okay. <laughs> Excellent. Okay. Okay, anything else? That's it for that part. Okay. Uh, principal's report. Yeah. Um, you sent us one, which was I nice. did. I apologize. I, we talked about sending it and it seemed to be a little slow on that regard. No. Um, so here's just kind of an update of what it seems like a lot's happened. Oh, there we go. A lot of training. Oh, good things. We've tried to divide it into curriculum instruction facilities and then other. Okay. I was going to say, there should be enough to go out into the public because it wasn't in the packet either. If you need more copies, I can find too. Yeah. The principal's report. The principal's report. Okay. First thing it says Bonnie Lad details. Right. I printed it out again. Oh. Uh, so, the yeah, the other one. <laughs> so if you take that hard copy, it has the details. <laughs> cool. She's um. a person named Bonnie now. <laughs> yeah, that would not be a good thing. <laughs> <laughs> be fine. Um. Yeah, there has been a lot of trainings, which All good. we continue to support teachers to do. Mm -hmm. Including our, the beginning the of our pilot. End of the table. Yeah. Pilot program of direct instruction. Oh, me! You're in there. That's you. Oh, this is you? This is yeah. Direct. yeah, that's what I thought. Okay. Very so well great. received yeah. by There's everybody who attended. Great mm -hmm. reports from I said it was very well received by everyone that Oh, good. Thank and you. And we need pictures for my odds and ends for this week. Oh, of course. Pictures. Wait, I don't go to the beauty parlor. Are you sitting on that? Are <laughs> you standing on that platform? Oh, I stand on a chair. Well, Bonnie will tell you. I stand. I can't oh. see them. I can't monitor what they're doing because I'm so short. <laughs> so I stand on a chair. So which you wasn't advisable. <laughs> the insurance person in me is ignoring. Yeah, that. I was going to say you don't hear that. that. <laughs> when you're in the room, you don't make those things. We found her something much better than a chair. Wonderful. <laughs> <laughs> if any parent or board member on the 10th and 11th of December would like to fill in for the superintendent or either principal, we're, we're taking nominations because Bruce, Lindy, and I will all be out of the district on the same day. Um, this is so during the parent conferences? <laughs> uh, uh, during the parent conferences? December no, 10th. it's during parent conferences, yes. It's, it's, <laughs> it's a safety 11. conference in Barrie that Lindy and I are, are going to. We'll all be at the conference. Yes. <laughs> so, so the safety it's conference, I will say, we have to bring our safety and crisis plans, and they basically go through and audit it and tell you what you should update, what you should. Great. I mean, that's our be very valuable. anticipation. Very valuable. So. Do we have the results from the lead testing? I see Dr. from today. But. Well, so here's another great example. We both buildings busted tail to get lead testing done, which basically you fill the water, there's a bunch of it. Yeah. It's not like we're testing it. We won't get the testing back, but they haven't even collected the samples that we're supposed to be collecting. Well, then they're probably no good anymore. No, they, no, say, they, 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 they say they're good for a week. For a week. So, and we're within that range, but... Who was supposed to come again? The, is that the department? Yes, or FedEx, I don't know. Okay, okay. I, I deal with water testing in another aspect of my life, and, and it's end dying usually up in Williston, and you've got to rush it up to them, or there's a courier down in No, we were given a specific date and told we had to meet that date. There was right. the only way on the date. Yeah. And it hasn't been picked up yet. Okay. And you can't test after a weekend or a vacation. Yeah, okay. So, to assign the week of all things. <laughs> Our three days were Wednesday before Thanksgiving, Thanksgiving, and the Friday after. Okay. Yeah. So. Um, but the fun thing, and I think Megan was there, is that kindergarten and first graders from both communities did a farm to table meal together at the meeting house in Stockbridge. Um, and it was, they had, both groups had been learning about where their food comes from. And so then they made some of the food and they all had it together and they had made plates in art class that they all that were served on. Oh, they sang a song ahead of time. 
And pretty much the whole meal was farm to table. There was very right. little that, that was Came not. Came from out of the valley, even. Yeah, so. uphill, donated potatoes, and yeah. all over the... Oh, that's sweet. Yeah, it was really, it was really sweet. It was yeah. fun. The Stockbridge Community House, I had never been there. It's, it's wonderful. Very, very wonderful. wonderful. <laughs> Thank you. All right. Uh, that brings us into policy review. Okay, I know Jenny uh, had a uh, bunch of questions, and I'll try to answer them as we go through this. Um, starting with the first code B22, uh, public complaints about personnel. This is. Uh, you would focus on uh, the last sentence in the first paragraph. Um, this this went before. Um, the, go to the next the next page, which is the um, that policy that passed in front of the um, policy committee committee on the third uh, of October. Then it went in front of the full board. Uh, the other night, and that last, the last uh, uh, sentence in the first paragraph, they didn't like. The first Felder version or the second version? No, the district. The one that says unnecessary and spiteful. Yeah, yeah, that, that whole thing. They didn't like the second part of that sentence. So the corrected copy that I have made, and you're the first board to see this, is that same uh, location. I put the however and the rest of it and took the other part out because that's what they seem to object to. And I guess I wonder if you guys have any questions about what I did because it seemed like the full board didn't want to pass it. If that sentence seemed like it was so slanted to the employee. Um, I think it sounds good. The board, and you're asking, sorry, you're asking for approval on the well, highlighted version. Well, yeah, we're going to do version these one at a time, and you wanted to see the old one and the new one. Yeah, the highlighted right. version. Is new. The, um, Bruce, the, um, it needs to be a semicolon after actions before however, not a colon, not a, a comma. Because okay. you're, you've got two, you're linking two desperate com clauses, and you need to get rid of that double space after however, comma. But other than that, those, the, the fact that I was raised by uh, uh, an English teacher uh, who was a grammarian. Um, Not only fine. an English teacher, but a grammarian. That's what made Carl that was amazing. <laughs> so <laughs> that's that one. Um, okay, so we have a, uh, a policy, B22, public complaints about personnel. I'll make that a motion. Is, that has uh, been brought to us. I would entertain a motion. I <laughs> motion has been made and seconded to approve the. Uh, the 11-27-19 uh, uh, WRV, WRVSU board version of policy B-22 with a grammatical cor uh, correction submitted. Uh, all those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 There's one. Okay, move along to head lice management. Make a motion Our to pass. <laughs> this was approved by the policy committee and Where are we? approved by the full board. No, I pushed so a few pages right. back and to the head lice management. Uh, hard on this. As so it seems to be everybody likes it so far. And yeah. I guess as much as I hate the state mandated rules on it, um, it, 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 there's really not much else we can do about it. And the, uh, the 2015 uh, CDC uh, policy is uh, noted in there. Right. Yeah. So, I make a motion to accept it. Second. Motion has been made and seconded to accept policy C-35 head lice managers as presented uh, by the, uh, uh, this was approved by the uh, SU as well, uh, as, appro as appro uh, approved by the WRVSU board on 1127. All those in favor signify by saying aye. Aye. Okay. Okay, going on to um, policy E-22. And I want you to go to the second one, which is the, the notes on it. E-20, I'm sorry. Uh, the second page that says WRVSU all districts except Sharon. That was the um, that you approved. This is you approved this last year. Yeah. And we approved it was changing superintendent to superintendent and uh, designee. Right. Yeah. We had certain things. 
So the other one uh, on top of that, which is, uh, I also caught a typo in there. It shouldn't say Sharon School District. It should say, um, you know, referring to our BSU School District. But other than that, district. this is the change. And, the, and as you'll notice, um, that the language is very similar, but uh, they never, uh, Christy never got the Sharon reference out of there. Um, there's, some, there's one in the second paragraph as well. Um, it's very, very close, but um, what happened was that the policy committee decided to, to accept the Sharon language, changing the words of Sharon into White River Valley uh, District instead of uh, Sharon, and then accepting uh, the Sharon version. That is a little different from the one before um, uh, that you've already passed. So they want to accept the Sharon version instead of the version we you accepted last year. Which is just that it, it says superintendent in place of board or designee in all Correct. those areas. Is that, is that right? Correct. Right. Well, we need to change it to because it, it, it uh, the, the second sentence is just wrong. It should say something like procedures for facility use approval and for rentals will be developed by the board of each district rather than will be developed by the Sharon board. Right. And what we, that what says we, that they're developing our right. So we would say the board of each district. So we develop our facility policies, they develop theirs, and we'd all be happy. Is that the intention? Is that it's by each board, not the superintendent mm -hmm. in that spot, as previously mm -hmm. stated? Okay. Believe me, I don't want to have anything to do with managing your facilities, even though I may get assigned to do that, but... Right. Yes. You know, Starford used to have, I don't know if Rochester used to have a form that people would fill out? Right. That would be a procedure. Yeah. Right. <coughs> Not a policy. <clears throat> so yeah. so we are the board there. or the designee, or yeah, designee. Yeah. what does that logistically actually mean? Like, when it says the board or designee may place reasonable time, place, or manner restrictions on use of the facility. Who is that designee with the principal? Principal. No. principal? We would be whoever we designated. We'd have to decide that. We'd so the say, board would designate. Right, we would say we want to do this. Okay, and how often do we need to do that? Every year? But should it be clear that the school board is the person designating the designee? Sure, we could say, or its designee. Yeah, or its designee, exactly. That makes it much clearer. Right so my, my question, though, is every year, the board is going to need to designate who's going to be the designee? Well, probably, you should, I mean, in things like that, I've, I've generally found you've designated it once, and then you don't worry about it you know, until, the problem, until something changes. Like, you, you change, you know, you, the principal changes, so you may say it's going to be the maintenance person is the one that's going to get people in and out of the facility because they live in town right. and the principal lives over the mountain. You know, but so if the principal lives down the street, maybe the principal wants to do it. Like our so old during, Michelle Ritchie lived right down the road. She always opened the building. So during any changeover in personnel or in board makeup, how would somebody go back to know that they need to, to, to redesignate somebody? We would know. Well, what about when we were all replaced by somebody else? How do they know down the road? Well, they'll have read all the policies. <laughs> they'll have read all the policies. <laughs> Good answer. Typically, I'm just a... No, it's a good Typically, the principals review these policies okay. frequently. We find out that they're in our back pocket. Okay. And then, in the ideal world, once all this policy work that, that Bruce is leading in our district gets done... Um, it's endless. <laughs> we should, that he's going to be happy when I say this. Once they all get done, we actually should have a review date. Policy should be reviewed right. every either three, four, or five years. And that's when you pick up, oh, we want to designate someone differently. Yeah. We were, okay. they, they, our old rule was we did it every three years because that way there was always someone that had been there for, you know, as a newbie as for the first one and then for, for, for another one as a later. So uh, we're approving we, this policy. Well, are we approving it as though. stated? Well, we're, I thought we just correct, made a couple of corrections. So wait, but they can we, does that mean it has to go back to everybody else? I'm just curious. No, we, we, we approve it for us, and then other people may have to approve it. I'm going to try to take this, what you've done, okay. to them. Okay. So what's the wording of the procedure for facility use approval and the rentals would be developed by, by, the, board the, of each by the board of each district? By the board and every time it says school board or designee, we're changing to school board or its designee. 
There's yes. no apostrophe, just ITS. And the yes. top one where it says Sharon Thank School you. District, I put White River Valley right. SU and the district districts. Yes, yep. that would that'd be fine. I have it right now. Okay. okay. So, Hold on, I have another question. Okay. Um, events at, in F, at, events at which fees are charged for profit, um, do most Organizations that use the school facilities considered non-profit, and therefore, if they charge an admit fee at the door, it's. I'm just not sure how those structures are set up. And it's not a profit because they're never going to make a profit. Well, they're, like they're spending to... more. The players always right. lose money on most shows, um, and they're a non-profit. Right. Says I'm a non-profit, and we but we charge admission. Right. But it's not a profit. And like if you have if you it's have a like a spa, if you have like a, a PTO cost, exactly. fundraiser spaghetti dinner that has a silent auction, mm -hmm. yes, it's raising money, but it's raising money for you know for a cause or a, you know a designated target. So it's a nonprofit organization so doing basically something. So we, we would not ever be able to rent to a for-profit organization. Well, we could because it says the school board or designated may, may deny. So if somebody came in here and wanted to do something that seemed perfectly legitimate and they're charging a fee, right? Some crap. Lindy and I would probably get on that by the board and say we don't have any problem with this group. It's actually going to benefit. Yeah, the Harlem Globe Trotters want to come in. Right. Whatever. Don't keep. Don't we like dumping yeah, basketball don't ball. Ball or whatever it is? Okay, so we those can amend things. those yes. at any time. Right. Yeah. It doesn't say they must or will deny, it says they may. Okay. Good, so we've got two changes as we're amending it, correct? Mm -hmm. Yes. Do we have three? Three. 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 Actually, you've got to put its. Or its. Yeah, we. Right, all the. the there's, there's four three. examples of its. So I see. It's always seems there's the, there's the, the first sentence that uh, uh, Tara was going through the corrections of, and the second sentence we went through. So I, I would entertain a motion to approve the. Policy E20 as I think G has to be changed to will be denied. Uh, just take it right out. Or take it right out. It says uses where alcoholic beverages, unlawful drugs are sold, distributed, consumed, promoted, or possessed. We can't have any of that on school property. So that's a good point. That's really so it's not may deny the application. You either need to say it will be denied just to cover your bases. I think you just cut it, right? Or it's you can just cut it. I don't know. Yeah. And just say uses for a prohibited by law since you're not allowed to have alcohol. Cut off G. Cut off G. Yeah. Yeah. Cut off G. Sorry, and then renumber H to G. That's a good catch. Yep. Okay. So we now have we amend the first sentence. We amend the second paragraph. We correct the four instances of designee to add its. We delete G. We renumber uh, H to G. Okay. With those amendments. So the board is an its. The board is an entity. Yeah. Okay. So you can certainly vote no if you think you should. Oh, I'm going to. I'm going to. <laughs> <laughs> Dissent goes through our ranks. Yeah. <laughs> Here, any further discussion? Hearing none, all those in favor of approving policy E20 community use of school facilities as amended, signify by saying aye. 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 Those opposed? Okay. Okay, on to emergency closing. That's uh, policy F31. Uh, the, the change in this one had to do with the first line on the policy. Uh, the current one that you adopted last year is the second page. Uh, the school board through its superintendent may order closing of any and all schools with operations of short, ba short term basis. And you change that, the Sharon board changed that to the school board and principal through its superintendent may order the closing of any and all schools whose operation on a short term basis would pose a serious threat to students or staff. So that first sentence is the only change in this one. Compared to the school board. The next one. The next one. Which is the school board may order the closing of any of those. They wanted the principal on that line because, you know, well, they're on site. I think it's no, the principal more. should be. Okay, well, there's more that is added, though, than just that. 
under implementation, there's a whole sentence down there that was added as well. Careful consideration will be given into the particular provisions and circumstances in each district. That was also added. Um, yeah. And, sorry, I missed. And sorry. environmental threats were, was also added. Mm -hmm. So again, my question is, was the logistics of saying that it's the school board and the principal that closed the school? They, their idea was that they wanted their principal to have the authority so because they were board? on site well, and the superintendent might not be. I mean, that's, that's what I want. Well, I don't yeah. want the board to have to right, like, get exactly. the phone calls at 5 in the morning. Should I yeah. decide if yeah. the yeah. roads are good enough? So I'll add you to a, the group. Cool. Yeah, <laughs> you can go on our text list. Right, so that's, I just want to uh, understand the logistics of how does the school board in there, of how does that play out? Well, I think that's why it's through, because the school board is the administrative I think, body. I think they're trying to and they're the saying the school board, board right, you are the authority, okay, so we, through your principal in, <laughs> you being the ultimate, the principal being the building administrator, through the superintendent, so it's showing that chain of command. Okay, it's just I think the, that was the reason behind it, but... I think I, the, the other reason was that the, it, the school board wanted to be able to meet in an emergency meeting to be able to close the school because of some mold and red. Other thing, yeah. Could I you chime in here? Sure. Yes, I, please, I, principal. I'm wondering if it should be the school board or principal, because let's take, for example, yeah. we have some contractors in here working and they blast through a wall of asbestos and we've got asbestos floating around. I don't mean to be disrespectful, but I'm not going to bother calling right. the board Please together. Don't. I'm going to evacuate the school. Well, that's what I'm saying. Yeah. I don't feel that the school board needs to all be notified on the school. So I think, it can be, I think it can be or. The school board or principal. I think so too. Now, I would call Bruce's office immediately and say I'm evacuating the school. We yeah. just broke through a wall of asbestos. Right. Uh, but I wouldn't necessarily take the time to call all you folks. I certainly would have somebody get on that fairly quickly. And we, yeah, we'd want them, yes. Yeah, because you'd want to know, and I wouldn't want you caught off guard. But, but right. also, for, for the school board to make any decisions about closing school, you need to warn a special meeting. Exactly. Yeah. Right. You have to all get together. So right, well, you could, have, you could call an emergency meeting, like, in an hour or whatever, because yep. you'd have to say... I'm just saying from a practical... Right. Point, right. Yeah, so the practical point of view is, I don't want to be... I don't want to be part of a chain of command when, when you need to be nimble and, and flexible. Right. When the okay. out in the middle of the day and you have to send everybody home. Do we also need to say um, under implementation where the second sentence it says the superintendent will also have the authority? Do we superintendent or designee? I think we're designee, yeah. So an implementation... Bonnie, and then you're calling Bruce to say we're going to close Rochester Stockbridge today, but Bruce is the one that then notifies the paper, the... Over the office. office. Wait, to the other way around. No. You're talking about if we leave early or like yesterday? Or like, like yesterday. a snow day, not an emergency oh. situation. Right. Oh, not an emergency. Not a snow emergency. Well, snow day, the conversations are all made as a group, right? Yes. Yes. Starting at... And we then we are five five responsible five. for our own. Okay. But the, the, yeah. yeah, typically what would happen, the practicalities of the real emergency is that Lindy and I would be handling getting the kids off and safe. Yeah. We'd make one call to the superintendent's office and they would handle all the notification pieces. We wouldn't be bothered trying to call you guys or right. do okay. this or do that. We would be focusing on getting youngsters out and away. Yes, getting the three to 11 year olds or 12 year olds out of the building. So did you make a change to the- uh... Change the and or in that very first sentence? Right, and then we also changed the second sentence of the first paragraph of implementation. We added or designee after the superintendent. Yeah, I got that. On a side, just a note on this. Um, when I saw on the bottom screen the other day about the school closing or the delay or the whatever, the, the, the early dismissal yesterday, it said the White River Valley School District, so I was confused whether that meant Bethel. I think it, it, it should, should, should say like the White River Valley Supervisory Union. School. Well, it's White River Valley School District. That is Bethel and Royal District. Okay. The correct name. Okay. So I don't think that's You're that asking separate whether or not you, you were deceived because you thought it was you were just talking about the Royal District. I don't and think I saw individually lesson. Rochester listed. And then it goes alphabetical or by county. Yeah. So like yeah. we still report individually, 
So then how it's listed, depending on your source, is WCAX is alphabetical. Some places it's listed by county. Sure. Um, the building, so it breaks it out that way. Okay, I, I wasn't sure. I learned a lot. I saw, I saw like, rots it. I thought we just all calling out the, super, the whole unit. Most of the time we do this all together and we do the same thing for everybody, but it's not always that way because you have different weather over here oh, absolutely. than absolutely. you do over in Oh, Australia. see, I thought you said last year that the state said you had to do it all together. <coughs> the bus company said that the they, bus were, company they wanted said. us to do it together, yes, oh. because nobody else in the state does it that way. Well, they don't live in the mountains. Because we have transportation running in schools that have no kids in them. And you know to pick up uh, special ed kids and things like that. So it was really confusing. We got bus drivers who were driving in towns where the schools are closed to pick up kids that are going out of district. And so it's really, really confusing. And I, I mean, I didn't know that nobody else did it this way until they said, "Look, you guys got to do this differently because it's really a, a hazard." you know, for all of you. So we get on this text line at 5 o'clock in the morning, and we talk to each other, back and forth. They, they're talking to the road agents and the road foreman. I'm talking to the other superintendents around us, and we all put the information together and then make a decision. Okay. And uh, I've been known to give people go to school and others, we got a delay or whatever. I mean, that, that happens. Not, not a lot, but some. All right, well, we have an amended policy uh, with uh, the changing school board and principal, school board or principal, and adding board designee after superintendent in the second sentence of the first paragraph of the implementation uh, clause. Uh, I would entertain a vote to approve the policy uh, F31 emergency closing as amended. Make a motion to approve. Second. Motion is made and seconded. Further discussion? All those in favor signify by saying aye. Aye. Okay, so the next policy, since we made the headlights C36 or C35, a great advance for retention and promotion will be C36. C36. The copy that is in here is weirdly marked up and has a mistake on it. Um, yeah, I didn't bring the one you sent. Okay. Yeah. Oh, great. Those are copies of the ones you sent today, I believe. Cool. Awesome. Do we have more? Yeah. Oops. Send it my way. Do we have enough? Do we have enough? Are we going to run it? Thank you. Yeah, we've got plenty. You got plenty? We get all the way around it. Yeah, it's got a whole stack of things. It'll start. All right. Need more? I got it. I might need to. So the key is, isn't the key about this is who's making the decision? Yes. Um, what we're looking at is, uh, we're looking at, uh, if you look under implementation, it talks about, uh, um, you know, classroom educators working with uh, building principals, and then it uh, uh, talks about uh, 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 testing and, and having a procedure for consideration and looking at uh, having rubrics and, and uh, you know standardized or uh, criteria uh, reference materials. So the idea is we're saying that there's going to be uh, you know an academically um, and pedagogically sound um, you know policy and reason for doing these so that we have you know we, we, we have some consistency and we're not we're not being uh, Concerned that we're making uh, uh, decisions for for any reason other than academics and you know where the child is. Do we have to have retention? Are we forced to have retention? Because it's not a good thing. No. It's not based on the research, which is what we should be going by. It's not. I included a, good thing. a little research in the back. I see the white sure. paper really <coughs> summarizes it very very well and. I mean, this is the National Association of School Psychologists, but any research you go you see on retention is not good, both socially and academically. This has not 
this is coming here first. It hasn't yes. gone to the policy committee. It has not. It needs to, you know, the, 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 the fact that, that uh, um, we don't have a policy and the only reason there weren't attorneys here at the last meeting was because the attorney was unavailable kind of indicates that we need to have a policy. We have to have some sort of Well, I'm just sick of it, guys. We're differentiating. That's what we're supposed to be doing. So if this student's needs aren't being met in fifth grade, they're not going to be met in sixth grade unless we do something differently. And that's the whole point of it, not retaining that kid, but making sure that they get what they need. Well, they, can, they should be able to do that in any grade. And retaining is an, it's an awful thing. It's an awful thing. I would add. I know, so but, but with you an exception, and oh, no. in more ways than one. <laughs> but I think this might be for oh, some of our students aren't in this, you know, in our schools in the secondary education. So, like wait, can you speak? I'm sorry, because there's uh, this applies not just to our students in our elementary school, but also yeah. for the like, greater, like the seventh through twelve. Well, yeah, it doesn't no, we, really cover that very well, in my opinion. Because we're talking about. If we're talking about a situation that was responded to, that's a different type of policy in terms of tuition dollars in connection to specific situations versus whether we're supporting something that I professionally and personally don't believe is a good, I don't think retention is a good thing. I worked in high school for 10 years and I can tell you more stories of where it backfired than it was successful. Yeah. Um, and, and I just kids live with it for their whole lives. Live with it for their whole lives. There, then we need to, yes. if, if that's going to be, if that's going to be our position, we need to have a policy that says this district will not retain children. Well, I don't think putting out. I mean, we, we need to. I don't think it has to be that black and white. I, I too don't support retention. There's nothing else okay. that says it's going to help a child. With the rare exception, unless you can guarantee that something significantly different is going to happen the following year, which most times we can't. So I don't know that we need a policy saying either. I do think we need to understand that we have to look at youngsters in multiple ways and differentiate their educational programs the minute we are even contemplating the fact that they are falling significantly sure, behind. Sure, sure, and I mean, the thing I liked about, uh, uh, you know, and I did not write this policy myself, I, I copied it. Um, you know, I, I liked, and I want to say this was from the, the Dina sent, uh, our attorney sent references, and this is basically lifted from Southern Vermont SU. Right. Um, so, and I mean, but is that it's big? basically, it, it, it talks about, you know, retention uh, requiring documentation of specific, Specific areas of weaknesses, weakness as well as documentation is why, as to why alternatives to retention, such as remediation in class and out, tutoring in class or after school, mentoring cooperative efforts with family or, or summer school would not achieve the same level of, of, of effectiveness, especially when a student has been previously retained. I mean, the thing, the thing that we need to have a policy, this is, in my mind, very similar to the policy issue I asked you guys to look into earlier which is how do we move, how do we have a policy for moving kids from Stockbridge to Rochester or Rochester to Stockbridge so that those kids have an appropriate cohort of, 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 of you know, ability, uh, of, 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 you know, equal ability peers to be in a classroom. And we can't have that conversation about how we might move a kid from Rochester to Stockbridge or Stockbridge to Rochester when that kid is sitting in front of us with a parent having an opinion and the SU having an opinion and the principal or a teacher having an opinion. That's not the time to write the policy. The time to write the policy is when you don't have a family that's going to feel like they're being being uh, uh, you know discriminated against or looked at you know uh, uh, looked at poorly. Um, so you know I think I mean you know in the policy I think you know it does specify that there needs to be uh, documentation showing why an alternative to, to 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 retention doesn't work. But if we're not going to have retention, we need to have a policy that says but we're not going to have retention. But there's it seems like it's two issues. One is what we decide as the school board of our, our campuses, and then are we saying that there's no retention by any other higher level? If we're saying there's no retention, any student that lives that means in Rochester we won't pay Stockbridge, for any retention at the middle school or high school level? We won't approve it. We don't have to pay for it. We don't, it's not a matter of us paying so for it. Taking, it's, us, it's us a matter of saying we deny, as I understand what Dina told us, it is the school board's ultimate decision as to whether a child is retained or not. Okay. So if we say there's no retention, 
There's no retention, period. No matter, okay. If we say it's retention up to the teacher or it's up to the parent, and we don't care what the school, what the school administration says, then a parent can say, retain my kid, and we'll say, that's the policy, your kid's retained. So those are the two really, you know, opposite sides of the spectrum. The parent always gets their way, the kid never gets retained. Um, you know, I think having something that... that well, the parent that, that, gets away and the kid is retained, then we know sure. that that's not good. Right. But we have to, I mean, there has to be, we have to have a reason that we would be making a retention state or policy as to what we were, would frame a retention, you know, a, a retention scenario to be in. But it's going to be the same thing, Carl. By that I mean it's going to be some sort of struggling student academically and socially. That's who's going to try to be retained. Well, yep. that's the same student who needs the differentiation and needs more structure and a different program. You're not going to be able, that student who is retained should be able to go along with his, his or her peers, but learn differently, be able to be, that's why we did, that's why Bruce allowed the whole DI thing to happen. No, I, 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 I understand that. I'm not saying that, that kids need to be retained. I don't think I don't. I, okay. I would just say that I think before you do anything, you need to study the issue and be clear. That's why I added the references yeah, and here. There's a lot and of and you know, if you can find some that, that are advocating for retention, bring them. I mean, I, I'm not saying what I put in here was the be all and the end all. I'm just saying it's hard to find people that are standing up for retaining kids. And it's and not happening. If you go to the research with reliable sources, it is not happening. Instead of is that the same with advancement? Is it the same yes. issue with advancement? Yes, it is the same with advancement. They're saying there's no advantage to putting kids ahead? skipping ahead. No. Uh, my daughter was a freshman in college when she was 16 years old. And, and it was a decision I made because she was so turned off by high school. It, it was not a decision I would make again. No, why? I, the same way that we give to the child who struggles, we should have advanced things and enrichment things for those kids who are, I'm not saying that they shouldn't be given extra even, I'm just saying they don't need to skip two grades in order to do yeah. that. And this is to keep them with their age grouping. Yeah, Lindsay, Lindsay still, hello, oh, turn it off. She's still always the youngest in so everything. Are we, are we right. saying that we're going to table this? I think we have to for yeah, more information because I, I think what we need before we do anything is, a, is really a substantive conversation about well, this. Because there may the be a rare time, so I'm, I, I'm trying to work my way through Ethan's point. There may be a rare time when as principals, Lindy and I are coming to the board and putting together this argument for why one out of 85 times we are thinking retention may be the right decision. So I don't want to close it off by saying we're never going to read Job, okay, right? if, if we're going to do that, can I get SU wide sta uh, uh, statistics on all the retention for the last five years, please? Because I don't believe that there's only one kid that's been retained. I believe that there's been a lot of retention. Who said there was one kid? Uh, you did in the hearing, uh, well, I can't say that. Well, and I, I think something to also think about is something as simple. This is really detailed and kind of locks us into a scenario that doesn't necessarily make up our district anymore. Something as simple as it will be reviewed on a case-by-case -case basis, and here, here's our procedures. You know, here's our procedure of what we're going to follow. Sometimes that includes some of this data and some of those things. Because if we lock ourselves into something, right? I wouldn't want to lock us in either yeah. way. Sometimes right, a know, very well-written procedure, administrative procedure, yeah. accomplishes the yeah. same thing. That's what sure. It has more flexibility. Yeah, absolutely. I just think I'm that not suggesting, I'm not saying that's what we need. I'm saying we ought to think about that. Yes. Yes. I, I think perfect. that, I, I, I just think yeah. that um, our lack of having a retention policy put us in a really, really tenuous and dangerous position that we got out of uh, I think we got probably the best possible outcome we could have. And I think that there were a lot of negative outcomes that not having a policy really set us up for. Um, so I think that, you know, whether we have the policy that we think is, 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 is the best thing, and I, I certainly, 
if, if, if we're against retention, we're against retention. I'm not a fan of it. I'm not a retention advocate. I'm a fan of us, you know, having Being clear, ha ha having a clear and equitable uh, a, a policy that people can understand. And parents so can read and, and we're know. Not, I'm curious, do other schools have a retention policy? This is this is this is the Southern Vermont SU uh, retention policy with some language language change. Yes, I haven't done a poll to see how many. Uh, check the check the email from the energy CC. Do you want the report? Um, in our four different retention policies. In, in our S supervisory, no, no in, in our state. In Vermont. State. Ah. This is this is like the Bennington Brattleboro um, well, Southern Vermont policy. Carl, back back to your that statement about lack of. Something. I don't feel that this covers that scenario. Yeah, that this does not cover that scenario. This covers that scenario. This does not help us at okay. all, based on what you're saying. We need a clear procedure. Sure, and procedures. I keep using procedure because that's what I feel like was lacking. I mean, I had where's my sure. notes say, oh, where's the there sending and receiving, right? There are all sorts of procedural so, errors that happen. And but. that is a huge reason why, I, why I'm struggling with this because it just really doesn't make up what we are as a school district anymore. And it locks us into something that I'm sure. not sure would have helped in that really difficult. So I completely understand what you're sure, saying. Sure, sure. Well, and, the, 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 and, and again, the, 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 the beast that becomes problematic is the seven to twelve year old or the seven to twelve yeah. graders yeah. because it's a it's a receiving school that is saying we're the people that are on the ground with this child this child is in our classrooms this child has been following our programs and they're the curriculum that their parents picked for them because they said they wanted their kid to go to Woodland or, or um, Woodstock or Rutland or Harwood or wherever they went um, so understanding that that uh, we have to have a way to treat these, 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 these fellow educators and their opinions and their thoughts and integrate them with you know, our responsibilities both, ed both educationally and fiscally to, 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 to right. our students is, 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 is a tricky thing. I and agree. I think though know, we have to have a procedure that they need to follow for it to come through us. Sure, and that's because a, it's and your you, tax you know, dollars that, that are paying for that can, that, 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 that can be put together, but we need to, I mean, I just, what I worry about is saying, well, let's see what the policy committee says, and let's kick it down the road, and let's see what else we can find, and okay. let's sit down and maybe we'll talk about it at our retreat, gets us closer to where we are halfway through the school year. So for any kid that's out there right now, school, every school is evaluating, and they're saying, okay, maybe this kid's not going to cross the finish line, because we're getting near the first semester. So if we kick this down, you know, we, we wait till budget, we make a policy that can be in any way seem to be targeted at someone in April, when we're getting, you know, when we get back to this somehow, then we're in a whole different. Well, oh, nobody's space. saying that we're going to kick this down. All we're saying is that, I mean, I, I've read the research on it. That's why sure. it's so bad. But people haven't. So all they're saying is table it so that they can read the research and then come back with a more empowered decision. And, and, and don't the just read the research that's in there. Look for other research. Yeah, that's absolutely. Like I said, I just want us to have a policency because. Right. Yeah. yeah. The other thing we're not. The other thing I'm going to add that, that I think to Carl's point we have to be aware of is with more personalized learning plans coming in, there will be more kids that will take five years to finish high school. And it's not because they're retained, it's because of their personalized learning plans. So somewhere we have to figure out how that fits into whatever it is that we ultimately end up putting pen to paper about. And that's going to require some, some looking into in terms of how a PL, a personal learning thing is going to impact high school students. So just so sure. I understand where we're at with this policy, um, it is being asked to be tabled because we're, the board needs to review whether we want to take a, a no retention policy altogether, is that? Mm -hmm. I, yes. I feel that there's just so many individual cases that to, to really say black and white, yes we are, or no we're not, just could really let, some kids fall through the cracks who could really benefit from developmentally. Maybe they are older, but developmentally they are at a younger. Um, but then they should be serviced at their needs, no matter where they are. Their needs so, should be serviced. And if be, listen to, they're repeating what they did, they're repeating a grade. That's what they're even called. But Nothing they would be really with different. kids that would be their same maybe physical and mental capacity. Is that any good? 
Well, is, I thought that's the reason they well, didn't want to retain them. One of you know, the most common ones I've handle 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 but, but it is also one of the most common things I've ever heard about was the idea of um, this standard thing that boys, five-year-old boys going into kindergarten or going into first grade, and that, and that they're, or preschool even now, you know, that it's better to hold them back till they're six before they go in. It's because it's developmentally and socially. Reading. And that's Reading. what I've heard about. Well, well, okay. Ethan, that used to be but what that is that used to be. Yes, that used to well, be. I'm not saying I'm yeah. not saying it's even that old. This is this is this is my son. So this is only three years old. You know, two years, three years old, ago that that I was the standard thing. It's well, no, it's what was told to us by the school. That's why it happened. That's why it happened. Okay. I, I can't speak to that because I wasn't here. Yeah, well, no, I'm just saying, but that's... Say so, <laughs> so, I mean, this would argue to Carl's argument of having yeah. a policy because it wasn't until very recently that was the policy because it was a very common... People saying, yeah, we do this all the time with five-year-old boys and six-year-old boys as far as going ahead. Right. So, um, I think it argues very well for having a policy that we have some yeah. guidelines because otherwise you another principal comes in and the whole thing changes right. and it can go back and it can so so or it could be uh, the yes. wording could be as simple as we'll review retention cases on a case by case basis under this timetable you know what i mean and like carl said conversations are happening now potentially for some kiddos if they're on a semester schedule and things like that so we should be notified as they send a school district now Right. And, and that conversation's happening, and what does that mean? And you would, and, and then the procedure, a right. procedure that would basically encompass a lot of what this is saying, the right. need to, uh, these evaluations. To be documented. Documentations. Well and just wait for us to lock ourselves in, and then some case that we've never even heard of comes yeah. along. It comes along, yeah. I agree with Carl, though. Sure. You guys have really had a very nice educational conversation about the stuff, which is great to see. <laughs> <laughs> no, really. Well, it is. So, well, Not to say that we haven't had it before. I mean, but this was great. So I, I was enjoying it. Um, <laughs> Well, Carl, do you not want to leave tonight without something because you're feeling? I can leave. Or... I can leave tonight without something if we get something. If we if we come back and then we talk, we circle back on this at our next meeting. I just like I said, I it's you, know, you feel awesome. out in the limb. Yes. Like, yes. We're out in the limb. Yes. You don't want to leave us there. Yes. So yes. Let's let's go ahead and let's move this policy. Uh, let's all read the research that Bruce has attached and maybe oh, get some more. I mean, uh, poke around and find more. Think, think about what you're thinking. To us. Google uh, retention policies in Vermont, or I can send you the links that Dina sent me. And uh, let's put this on our next uh, on our next month's agenda. But we really do, I think. Well, next month we should have this. And Lindy, if you want to, I mean, I know you. I know. Decided. I just, I, I just if mumbled you, under my breath. It's you, really now challenging. Well, I know you just said uh, a procedure. I mean, if you could give us a ballpark procedure. By our next yeah. meeting, that would be really wonderful. So then we would have the example. I think I think that's what we need in front of us is the example of how it works. Yeah. Yeah. That, uh, just, and that's what we're looking for because we're feeling like and this is some not, other sets of eyes too. This is, I'm oh. sure I don't know. Oh well, you see, why do you say that? <laughs> All right. <laughs> well, you made so, it before you even read it. Now that we now that we beat the policy horse to death, let's move on to the budget. Oh my God. So why do you yeah. speak? Okay. We will not need 20 minutes for the budget discussion. What we just wanted to do as we're starting into the budget process is to um, sort of really just touch base with the board to find out are there any uh, major initiatives, directives, suggestions you'd like to give us as we start through the budget process. One of the things that Lindy and I are going to do is we are going to look at the engineering report and try and sort out which of the uh, priority one items in there is feasible to do within a single budget. Now, some of them have a higher cost than we can put into a single budget yes. for either of the three buildings, for any of the three buildings. But we are going to look and see if we can do things like exterior lighting, check out the pieces to the fire panels. Those kinds of things. So we will include those in the budget. But is there any other direction the board would like to give boiler us? Boiler maintenance. A lot of well, boiler maintenance. Um, a lot of that would depend on 
one uh, report that hopefully Tara's going to share with us about our, our mystery surplus and our, our various uh, 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 funds that have been discovered. Okay, there was like a six-figure number that we were in the positive of. Is that no any, longer there? I don't have any change other than as of You're yesterday. Well, that hasn't been reported to us yet. As of yesterday. So go ahead and report this to us since it's never been reported before. Because <laughs> recall, you were not at our last meeting because it was the uh, e uh, educational one. As of, the, as of yesterday, they <laughs> were wrapping up the SU, which impacts all the member districts. So This is the auditors? Yes, like they the being the auditors. So your tentative, tentative, <laughs> please <laughs> do not hold me to this number. Right. Uh, the tentative surplus. And what year is this for? For FY19, is three hundred and twenty-nine thousand. That's just our sum, right? Yes. And is that or is that not including our uh, uh, building and our various reserve funds? Be including the various. So this 329 is not really a surplus. It's the fact that you just so dumped your, our reserve fund. That's your unassigned, fund unassigned fund balance is 329,000. So are, that's are money our building that reserve funds counted in our assigned fund balances? Yes, they are. And some of them had a deficit in them of like $5,000. So it wasn't very much. I'm sorry, had, can you just go back? I'm, I'm just a little lost here. Um, uh, just to find, I, I just always need new definitions again. Um, fund balance. Just can you tell me what that is? Money left over. That's money true. left over. That's okay. money from left last over. Year? General fund. From yes. last year. Yep. Okay. F and specific to our supervisory union. No, no. Our, our district. Specific to, our to our Rochester our Stockbridge Unified District. Our district. Thank yeah, you. this is your very raw district. draft Thank financials. You. Thank you. So what are so what I, are and I and air that with caution because I still have outstanding questions to the auditors about some of your reserve funds that they okay. have not answered yet. And so, what are our reserve funds? You have a building reserve. For which campus? Both. Okay. No, I didn't know. Which I believe you combined. No. 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 We voted them separately. When because all any outstanding reserves would have from the individual buildings would roll to the unified district. We created two, these two new funds when we merged. And then yes. they come in. Any outstanding funds that were prior reserve funds go to those new reserve funds. That's right. The but there's was. right. But there's a Rochester fund in the stock. Yep. Yeah. So that would have been for FY19, your first year as a merged district. Those funds that were previously okay. individuals would become the Rochester stock. The guy, fund. the guy, business manager. David. David. Um, <laughs> no, he was the the. He talked about how you had two separate reserve funds that rolled into the new district fund, and he was making two accounts so that they stayed separate, so that we knew which was the Stockers Fund and which was the Rochester Fund, because they were separate. Like Enough. you would have, say, an athletic fund and a bus fund, or a roof fund or a furnace fund. You'd have different sinking funds or different different. And, uh, and we uh, did vote on that in, in our public annual meeting. Well, yeah. It was warned as real funds specific to campus. But that aside, so we've got 329 in unassigned. The building reserve, you think, is about? This is why I have a lot of questions. The special revenue fund is how they have this coded, worded, has a fund balance of 219000 The capital projects fund has $44. The who fund? Capital projects fund has $44. Okay. And the permanent funds has 429000 so yeah. permanent funds. So these are my questions to them, is I need the itemization of those, which are not provided in the initial draft financials uh, that I have. What is the 429,000 in? Permanent fund. Permanent, permanent. permanent. What is the definition of permanent, permanent fund? 
definition of permanent closure? That's what I'm waiting for. Okay. Oh, I'm sorry. Gotcha. Yeah. Thank you. So I have already gone back to them and said, I need specifics as to where this is coming from. Because the $44, I can tell you from my prior research, that was the Stockbridge Building Reserve Fund balance, was $44. That was on your FY18 audit. That was what your fund balance was right. for Stockbridge. I believe there is more there. I've asked them to review research. I can, and send, I can send you the, the, because the, I have your the trial previous balance. documentation from right. Donna. I have your trial balances from the old software system. Hence my right. questions. So, to be continued on that. I have a, sure. I have a question. I, I just want to chime off this budget discussion. I don't want to put Tara on the spot. She was going on explaining all of our funds and I mean, that's fine to ask, but I don't want to put her on the right. spot. Right. Well, but it, it's, it's, I understand what you're saying. Right. And I'm not trying to, 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 to grill her per se, but right. what's very, very important is understanding, you know, well, in my mind, I thought we had, you know, 100 and some, 180, something like that in the, in the Stockbridge Reserve Fund that had been put aside, and someone's going to maybe for a generator or whatever, and there was some money that, that Rochester had put aside as well. What I don't, what, what I can worry is, is that that 329, is really part of, part of all of our funds bundled together because there seemed to be, at least from the auditor, what he presented at the SU meeting uh, in, in October, he seemed very kind of like, we don't know, there's just pots of money and there's no real, he wasn't very clear about how money was moved, you know, between accounts and there's uh, changing the accounting system, changing the chart of accounts, all the various things that understand that we can make this perfect storm of, 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 of confusion. I just don't want us to think that we've got more than we do. More you know, than is this 429? Is that actually the funds that are sitting behind the the the, the, the trustee of, of, of public funds in, in stock? I mean, he's just got them listed on a thing. Right, and that's and what I double need that so And I don't have that. I'm afraid that they don't get excited. right now. We think we've got lots of money, and we're going to turn around and find out we don't. So what we've got money would be helpful. We put the projects together for maintenance in terms of the budget things we're recommending we address. We would put them together in a list. By the time we actually have to meld them into the budget, I'm hopeful that Tara's questions will be answered and we'll know, is this 429 new money or is it inclusive of everything else or what really is it? So then that way the board can direct us to say, okay, we can put about this much towards those projects. Smart, yep. As opposed to waiting to that point in time to figure out what we're gonna try. That makes sense, divide and conquer. You asked about other items? Yes. And I was just wondering, I mean, do we want to make what JD's doing? Uh, I mean, when will we know that this is no longer a pilot project, but something that we want to fund? And, and how much will it cost? But I would think that would be something we definitely want to have in our budget. It's some consideration of that. We would need funds in there for materials to make that happen. And we would... So not to pay her? Are you I won't, I can't, I can't be paid. Because okay. I'm on the board, but, but I mean, but, can I but, talk about? but, but special ed will be doing, um, well, for some, we do, we think we have some funds to maybe, uh, carry on the work that doesn't necessarily have to come out of your particular budget. It's okay. Okay. Good. But Just wanted to make sure that was. So okay. I guess we also wanted to talk about like what our, like, what we would like to see for like our tax rate, right? Like do we want to, are we trying to, we're trying to do like a, a certain percentage of an increase or trying to hold to a same as last year? I guess you can go either way or you can say, Or do we just do we let want? them see what they come up with? And does it make it? Well, we have some goals, right, from our retreat. We had some very clear goals of what we hoped We'd really love to see. We've talked about second language for a long time, and we'd love to see how that can fit into the budget. Um, and if that takes a magic wand, I don't know, but that's certainly, I remember that as one of our top things, yeah. um, as being an attractive and fully functioning elementary school to get that. Um, I would sacrifice some, you know, I mean, that's the kind of thing, right. as a taxpayer, I would, oh, you're going to offer me this for this little raise? Well, that's a good one for me. You know, that's one that's easy sell. 
Um, and the thing about but I'm just trying to remember because we had a list of things yeah. that we wanted yeah. to see in our school from the retreat. From and the, the thing retreat. about second language programs or any program like that, it's easy to put into a budget and see exactly what it costs. And if, we, if it can stay in there, great. If it can't, it's also easy to take it out of the budget. Mm -hmm. Sure. Well, then let's 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 definitely put that on, on, on your list of a yeah. thing to of, of, of a thing to be able to do. Because it's some sort of some sort of. We're going to look at kids to Woodstock. I'm also making an assumption. I'm making the assumption that you want us to continue the joint programming between the two schools. Absolutely. Yes. Yeah. And Absolutely. we may actually bump that up a little bit. Yep. That would yeah. be good. Yeah. The one thing I was going to mention. I mentioned last year is any sort of efficiency between the two schools that can be made. Yes. Um, Lindy, I had a question, the second language, I thought you had said, and I think this was just an idea, nothing I think set in stone, the PE teacher at Stockbridge. Um, no, is bi she's bilingual. Um, we've been running this enrichment block that's like, um, how many minutes is it? 30 minutes every Tuesday afternoon. Um, and the kids brainstorm what they would like to see happen. And that's part of our response as a staff to the school climate survey from kids. Uh, they want school to be more fun. And I can't, that, that doesn't mean I can cut a math class or a reading class, but I can off, we can offer as a staff other opportunities. And we have that on a month rotation. Language isn't really in a lot of kids' minds as another opportunity. But we've done a lot of outdoor activities, even just going into the preschool classroom and they do an activity with the little kids has been one thing. Right now we're doing a nutritional snacks one, a maker space, uh, that's this month. Last month we did movie making. So, so I'm sorry, so you're saying that the language arts was, uh, or the foreign language was sort of an elective as part of this enrichment? It's just an opportunity for kids to be exposed to different things uh -huh. and the kids brainstorm the list of what the different things were they want. Okay, and so she is willing to do that, but we're trying to use student voice to dictate what those things are. Okay. But can't we make one of them? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I know they want to have as fun, parents, but still, yeah. they're not making it. Sure, fun. fun. Life is fun. 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 They're taking away. Yeah. <laughs> the other well, thing that Lindy and I would one bring one. up very quickly that we talked about is, uh, and there's nothing we can do about it through this budget process, but I would suggest that we have a more substantive conversation at another time about the length of our school day. We need X number of minutes for mathematics and X number of minutes for arts and X number of minutes for literacy. And I understand the value of, of a second language, of a world language, but that time has to come from somewhere. Yep. Right? Yep. So it's yep. some, and we know that people want kids to be outside for a little well, recess. We have a comp in the contract, right? Up it's to eight hours. Up yeah, to eight, eight hours. hours. What's the current day? It can go up to what is our what's current, the current day? What's oh. our work seven. seven. So we do have some yeah. room in yeah, yeah, a little bit of contracts. Okay. We're quarter of eight until three. We're going to have to give up a lot to get more time because it's with the union, I think. But I don't know that because we have to try to do it. Up to eight hours is more than the only the only school that goes eight hours is Newton right now. They have a half day. And they, and they, they, look they, have, a they have a half day on Friday. For we had to, if you recall, Bruce, oh, when, when we like merged, we had to buy. Yes. We had to buy time for the Windsor Northwest districts because they were 15 minutes short, and that. And tons of And tons of well, Carl, what do you say? What happened? What percent? One half percent. One percent. But again, that's to that's make the contract to make the workday contracts even when we moved when we merged the two SUs, oh. we had to buy like 20 minutes or 15 minutes. Uh, and it took uh, us three months. But to there were some days that you had, like yeah. professional yeah. development days, that you had more than. Right. So we gave so we gave some professional development days up. We still ended up giving, I want to say, another half point. Yeah. And like I know that. that's not going to be solved tonight. But we were just looking for broad stroke, right. broad brush yeah. directions from the board. So we've got a couple thoughts. If you think of others that as you're driving home, why didn't I say that? Don't hesitate well, to email it to us. I would like us, I uh, was brought up at the retreat, and I'm, I'm really, it means a lot, is to look at the younger population, our preschool, and even uh, younger population of what can we do to, to help educate those kids, or can we partner with, um, you know, some type of daycare system like they are doing in other districts. Um, I don't know how it would look, but I, there's there's a real big need for 
You mean the aftercare, the aftercare. some of the other districts after, have Yeah, provided. aftercare, or and even, care. or could we expand it even further to to have a childcare come in, rent space from us or, or something, and have even younger kids, because it is a big need in this, in our towns, that there is no childcare, and also I feel like every dollar we put towards them at that age, we're going to save tenfold by addressing and being able to, to mold them younger. If we really want to strengthen our youngsters academically, every dollar we put in preschool is going to be the highest payback we're going to see right. anywhere in the system. Absolutely. And there's really three, I think Stockbridge has already addressed a couple of these. Um, for the Rochester program, it's the fact that it isn't full day, that yeah. there's no transportation, and there's no aftercare. And Stockbridge is this address. No aftercare. And you got the other two, right? Right. Full day and transportation. Full day for four-year-olds four -year -old. and transportation, but we lost out on several three-year-old families this year because we're just a half-day family and people don't have jobs in the community to be able to come on their lunch break, pick up and transport to daycare. Yeah. Or they'll and lose their daycare spot or something like that. So we're... They we talked about like a, a child find early to see what the real interest is because we could plan all this and try and budget for it, but it may not be something families want or are ready. You know what I mean? We could try and expand, but maybe. I, I, shout out after I think we're yes, yeah, shouldn't have some aftercare. Maybe aftercare. And it's a Royalton's been, a, been thinking about uh, summer care. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Also, they make a lot of money on their program. Sharon does. Sharon does, so yeah. What do they about do? eighty thousand a year. They they basically charge a, a fee uh, in the afternoon that goes on into about five o'clock. Because the state will pay ten, ten and well. so in most places the family has to pay the additional. Like when my <coughs> children went to Orange County Parent Child Center, I get ten hours covered by the school district because it's the mandated date preschool, but then the rest of it I have to pay for. And so I basically get one day a week, and so then we, I pay the rest. <coughs> so they pay, go year round. I pay understand. for the staff the morning as teachers, preschool teachers, and a teacher's professional wage. The afternoon they get a support staff Hourly wage rate. because they're now aftercare folks. So it's a little different in the funding part of it and the staffing part, but it's really important to have people that aren't that are there and that know the kids and know them in the morning, know them in the afternoon, and and are stable. The, that population stable and it's very stable there. They really haven't lost much. Well, oh, the other model that works really well is if we can find someone who wants to operate a daycare right. on our campus. They're actually operating the daycare. We're providing the space. You know, there's legal documents, insurance documents, is all that. But it's it's doable because a number of districts are doing it. I think. I think we lose a lot of kids because of the midday program that requires transportation. Right. This year, Rochester, our Rochester campus, has gained one child for that same reason. He, she lives in another district, parent works over here, the other district has a half-day program, there's nobody to pick him or her up at noon, so the child comes here to our program, mom works in the area, she picks the child up and takes him to a daycare, and then goes back to work. But but still, it's, it's but quite. A bit. There's a lot of transition there for that little guy or little gal. So I mean, I think long term. And by long term, I mean in the next year or two, we should really look at a model that makes our preschool program more accessible for all children. I, I'd like us to go down that road. Yeah, because we should have a conversation with Granville and Hancock. I mean, I just right, read Grand the Herald, and I I read in their select board that they are having the same issue of wanting. Child care before and for the young kids in the area. So I, this is a regional problem. Right. Mm -hmm. sure. And there is a critical shortage of, of I, I don't know if that's what you just said, Megan. I'm sorry if I'm repeating. There's a critical shortage of child care in this valley. Mm -hmm. Yes, there is. Yeah. There are 100% oh, okay. You walk in, talk to any of the parents standing out there. 20 minutes. Say, can you tell me about child okay. care? They're like, it is program. Yes. Um, so that puts us on. Uh, reviewing the timetable real quick, which is, I think, going to not take us 10 minutes, because it's going to be Sarah looking at this piece of paper right and say, cool. thank you, Sarah. Don't take me, you think, Marilyn. She created it for me. I gave her the instructions of what I needed, and she said, I'll take care of that for you. <laughs>
It does. I love that she does that for me. Amy made sure we have to worry about it later. This is, well, this is really is nice. Well, no, no, no. It's this good. is really, I like this a lot. No, 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 no. You're absolutely right. So You're really gonna like this. This is like when when should you be expecting your book in the mail? When should you expect to see things in the paper? When's the, the last week for reporting meetings? So, uh, really so this is, uh, is the one from Tara. What's the, the difference between the two? I don't know what you're talking about on the other one. Well, one's from this is Bonnie's. One's from oh Bonnie. no, hold on to the annual report one. That that gets embedded within Tara's. So let Tara go first. Okay, thank you. Just nice to make sure I'm looking at the right thing. So this is like. This is based on statute, when your town right. meeting is and going backwards, so you know when you're, when you have to do things. Perfect, thank you. So that's wonderful. what this is for. Oh, this is great. Is there an extra one? Oh yeah, there's, oh, do you need one? I'm going to give you, you we have extra, otherwise I can give Joanne my pocket. No, there's two here, I don't know. <laughs> I thought I made enough. <laughs> yep. Oh, you're welcome, Joanne. There you get some exercise. <laughs> This is That's an amazing one. Look at this last regularly scheduled board meeting. That's like. Yeah. Special. Yeah. Special. Yeah. 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 So, are there any questions? I mean, otherwise, this is, you know, your, for your information. Straightforward. This is wonderful. Yeah, this is really great. Thank you. You're welcome. Very Thank helpful. So I will let Marilyn know how much you love it. Yeah. Okay. Excellent. Yes. yes. So, the one thing is. So, the second one that I gave to Ethan is oh just gosh. dates for the annual report. You notice it says draft no, no, because no. I wanted Tara and Marilyn to review it and make sure it lines up with their budget piece. But what this would be the timeline for the annual report group. We just don't have spoiled. So when will we see the timeline? And so when? I am hoping, hoping, hoping that January will be the last one. Yeah, I think that's the best thing for us. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Yeah. 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 Yeah
we expected to, or we hoped that we were going to be reporting back out uh, to this body tonight, but we are not. Uh, mainly because we've identified a few key flaws uh, with the report that we've done. Um, basically, they all revolve, or the, the, the flaws revolve around the, 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 the fact that we asked for an agnostic report in the beginning. And what that means is that what that report tells us is, it, it is how to either knock this building down or make this building the best building to be for the next you know, 25 or, or, or 50 years. And it doesn't really, it, it, the, the report makes it hard for us to get our hands around what our immediate needs are, what our short-term needs are, and, and, and what, of our, what of our long-term pieces are, because it doesn't frame it in terms of understanding or looking at where our student population is going to be a few years from now. It doesn't, uh, uh, we, we don't really analyze. So it, all that report talked about were the three buildings. It didn't talk about, um, for example, if we wanted to just get rid of all three buildings and have a new school, if we wanted to completely close both schools at tuition, if we wanted to uh, uh, look at some of the alternatives, for example, one of the things they did when they, when they uh, uh, talked about revamping this building, they said, well, this building doesn't have an art room. Let's knock the wall down and put an art room on the other side of the gym. They didn't think about maybe reusing some of the spaces and trying to uh, uh, necessarily think through some of the more uh, some of the, some of the more obvious options to a lot of us on the committee. Um, there was uh, um, so what we what we've done is we're going through now. We're having a meeting next uh, uh, Tuesday where we're going to be going through and completing things into kind of a basic grid that not only talks about um, what it would take to, uh, uh, you know, what they say we should do to Stockbridge to, to, to expand that building or, or to make that building uh, an appropriate school, what we should do if we wanted to be in this building, what we should do if we wanted to be in that building, but also, uh, again, you know, what are we, what is our student body going to look like going forward? Do we need to have um, um, schools, what would it look like if we went back to being separate towns? Because one of the yeah. issues becomes when you look at the money, yeah. I mean generally it's, it's a 60-40 split between Rochester and Stockbridge. You guys have 60% of the population, 60% of the kids, 60% of the school expenses, 60% of the grand list, you know, within a couple, a couple points. We're about 40%. Um, however, when you look at the costs in general, the, the overall report, it's like a million some dollars to, to, to really fix up Stockbridge, and it becomes in the neighborhood of five to six to fix up one of these two buildings, which gets out of that 60-40 proportion. What we don't understand is, number one, um, again, that, that $5 million is a lot of dollars. Um, uh, and uh, because, again, it, it, can, it, it didn't, con it, in our minds, it didn't contemplate really um, looking at, at some of the compromises that could be made on the Rochester buildings. Um, and then also that, um, you know, we don't, we don't really understand, the, 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 the thinking is, is that you have to bond out to the district, um, whatever, the total, whatever the total cost of the district's projects are. But, you know, it could, if all the work, and, and then the buildings revert to the towns for a dollar if the buildings aren't in use anymore. Um, so the, the, one of the scenarios that got tossed around was the idea that if you know, we have to close a school and we've put all these money into a school, we've got a district that's tuitioning everyone and we're still paying bonds because we've, 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 cool, we've, we've closed schools and we've, 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 bonded, we've bonded these buildings. So trying to understand um, more about some of the, uh, uh, you know, the, the, the political options so we can put the, the, the building repair and renovation options. In a, in, a, in a more practical context is, 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 our, is, is our job. And then um, understanding more about, uh, you know, just how bonding works. Because, it, you know, if we decide we're going to do this, the, these kinds of projects to make these kinds of educational campuses, it becomes a different story if Rochester pays for what happens in the Rochester building and, or in the Rochester uh, buildings and Stockbridge pays for what happens in the Stockbridge buildings. That seemed to be, at least in some of the discussions, kind of uh, a part of the equity. So we're there, it's been, it's, 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 it, we've been working through it. There's been some contentious conversations. 
Um, and we need to think about, and this is something I'd like us to think about over the break and figure out how we're going to go forward in January with contemplating some of the, you know, this is the committee looking at the report and trying to frame what it says and understand it so we can present it back out and realizing that we have to understand some of the context of what we're presenting about renovating the building in, but we need to get the conversations going with, the, with uh, uh, our communities now as well. So we need to start, I think, coming back in January, let's start thinking about what that time frame might look like. And maybe we should be thinking about how that presentation would go as being a, as being a, 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 a keynote topic for our, our, February, uh, our, our February retreat. Because we've got to figure out how, you know, either how we're going to bring these communities together or what we're going to do about it. Um, so to add, these, we kind of got off task with our charge, but the committee agreed that in reading the report, these were all natural questions that came up in discussion. Because you start to put big ticket items on the table and it's like, but wait a second, what's the vision for the next five years? What, which is what we started to talk about in August as well. What's the vision for the next 10 years? Is this feasible? All those questions Carl, or points Carl brought up came from people reading the report and looking at all the work that needs to be done and what's best for our kids, safety-wise and educationally. Um, I think there's some models to look at. A lot of school districts around the state are having similar conversations because the population is declining. Uh, one example I'll give is up in Bristol, they've done a year worth of community engagement with a mediated conversation. What are the visions of our communities? What do our communities want? And then, hey, this is what this is going to cost. This is the backing of the report. Just, just building-wise. We're not even talking personnel-wise. We're just building and programming. So I think, like Carl said, from this report, it's really time for us to start to move. Um, not because we need to make a decision tomorrow, but we need to hear what community members want and are willing to pay for it. Pay for it. Or not pay for it. Yeah. Um, well, it feels like to me, and maybe I'm wrong, um, forgetting everything, but one of the things we haven't had yet is, it, it seems like whenever we have a discussion, there's either a bunch of Rochester people there, or a bunch of Stockbridge people, and that I don't feel like we've had an open, mediated discussion where we've managed to get and done our job to get um, a full Stockbridge contingent and a full Rochester contingent. And it seems to me that that's essential to having a community discussion. I mean, mediate it because, right. you know, there's strong feelings, obviously. But I just, I, you know, that's not, you know, we're not hearing it all if we're not hearing it from the representatives of, of both community. And I don't know how. I don't know how you do that. It's, and, and I mean, it's been interesting too because the Rochester side of this building committee is um, um, uh, Rob Gardner, Amy, and uh, Cricket. Cricket. And then it's it's Joanne, myself, and uh, um, Willis Whitaker, who's a a, a pretty high end, uh, really savvy contractor yeah. that yeah. does not suffer fools gladly. Mm -hmm. So it's it's been you know it's it's already been and, and, you know the, the, it's, it's been an interesting conversation and even. You know, I, I agree with you about getting a broader picture because it's one of the things, you know, that Roger and Cricket see things differently. Um, you know, Joanne and I see things differently. Um, and, you know, we all, I think, everyone wants the kids to have the best thing, but we also don't. The fear that I think the committee gets into is what you were saying about the vision, is that, you know, when you're saying, okay, we're about to write a $7 million check, um, <laughs> I don't want to be writing that to have a, a, a really fancy building that becomes, you know, a, a senior center that none of the seniors in my town can pay for anymore because paying their property taxes plus their bond payment on this this wonderful building that, you know, they can go to is, you know, made them sell, you know? Ethan, two things to your point I think are, are very important. I think that we should spend a little money finding someone who can mediate these discussions because I think the job for the boards and Lindy and I, during these community discussions, is to just be very, very good listeners. Mm -hmm. yeah. I don't think Jenny should have to take notes. I think we should find somebody to do that. And we talk, and, and to your point about how do we get a good sized group from each community, we talked about that a little bit when we first gave the charge to the building committee and we decided that 
we would make a presentation in each community. Instead of making one in, in um, <coughs> excuse me, Stockbridge and inviting everybody down there, or one in Rochester and inviting everybody here, to do one here and one there. Mm -hmm. And I think that would heighten the probability that we would get more people from each community. But you'll only get the Stockbridge people in Stockbridge and the Rochester Yeah, right. that's yeah. the whole thing is. Right. You won't get the group that you're right. talking about. Yeah, I mean, yeah, and maybe it's. That group. Maybe yeah. that's the only way to do it, but isn't that interesting? Yeah, it's just, it's, I mean, you know. And that kind of says a lot. I think it's also, yeah, no, it does say a lot. And, and, and if there you are know. natural differences and, and really organic differences between the communities, you know, you know there is I mean, look way. at, there's the history of each, of Europe <laughs> and Africa is countries that were forced together that weren't meant to be together, you know, and tribes that were forced together into countries. And so I, you know, acknowledge if that's the public will, so um, I think that's got to be, but I mean, the, but we, have, we can't certainly have to make every effort right. to have the conversation. There is a way to get that kind of group if we wanted to do it, and I think I think we might be able to make a couple of contacts. It's called a focus forum. Mm -hmm. So what somebody would do is take the voter checklist in each community. They go down through and they'd identify every seventh person, every ninth person, how many people them, like, we felt. By phone. You actually make a phone call and they yeah. commit to coming. Yeah. That's great. And then you would set great. them in groups, mixed groups, three from Rochester, three from Stockbridge, around the multi-purpose room in Stockbridge, and there's somebody there with a the chart to chart their ideas and their papers, and there's somebody who facilitates it. Facilitation is, is key. That's, that's the key. It's I really don't think key. we're going to get that group, as Joanne said. No, just by inviting and putting things on boards. I still think we need to make those presentations, yeah. but I don't think we'll get the kind of What about that if it's a home. neutral, I don't know, is there a neutral? There is no, I mean, find a neutral space. I was just thinking, is there any barn? that's halfway between these two places that we could meet. But it's like, I mean, the Stockbridge Commons oh, is kind of, <laughs> the Stockbridge Commons is kind of the, I think the Stockbridge Commons is, is a wonderful venue. I was thinking it's a the beach. one that downstairs yeah. that place, yeah. yeah. It's yeah. closer to Rochester. Yeah. Yeah. And I think yeah. we have to, I think, think that we should start using it because, school, we have to meet yeah. where we have to meet. Yeah, exactly. I, I think we go make every effort into field our integrity in this issue to make every effort to hear as much comment as we can. From I, think that's the starting, I think that's the starting point. Yeah. It, um, I can share out a, a model that's been done like that and some resources are more than willing to. Go for it. Yeah. Um, so you can see, I just, yeah, it, it, actually she was my elementary school Probably principal, but she's now a professional um, this is, facilitator and mediator, and she's going around to some of these districts and running these community engagement pieces. Cool. Could you get us information on, on, on her? Just a, just an idea, of like a, just a quick CV uh, and uh, you know, a, a basic cost, and if she's got availability, because I think, you know, I, I don't want to bring Steve Dale back. This isn't, he's not a community guy. Oh, no. He's an educational guy. But I think, I, I think, I think we, we oh, no, 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 Combined the SUs, where we had we, 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 we had community tables set up with, with different people, and but also you know we had there was there were there were questions and the board there were board members that were at every table to kind of not to not to engage in the conversation but to answer answer a clarifying question. What does this mean or what does that mean? And it'll take a little time and it'll take a little money, but when you stop and think about it, it's the educational future of the kids in both of these communities that we're trying to plan for. So it's well worth investing some time and some money to get it right at the start. But I do think that we've only been together for a year and a half. So we've just started creating these bonds. And I think it's important for us to show as well what we have done together as, as uh, with our kids. What what has our kids been able to, to gain from, from this union? Mm -hmm. Not just, well, what building should we use and how much is it going to cost, but... Right, but, so I'm saying this process would back us up a step even further. What is the, that first question that one of the building uh, committee members asked? What is the vision? What do communities want? Um, because I think 
we have different pockets, like Ethan said, we have different pockets of information, but we really need to hear as many voices as possible, and that'll give a better direction. We kind of have dollar numbers to go with different things for facilities. That's what that report gave us. Right. But it doesn't, there's the emotional piece, and this would be a good way to have a healthy discussion about what we want, like those joint activities. No, I, like I, 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 I think so. Joanne? Well, I, I think the fear for Stockbridge, and, and I've talked with a lot of people about it, is, and, I, and it was reiterated in an email from someone from Rochester today to me, that it doesn't really matter, because Rochester has the votes. If, if Rochester votes as a solid block, which I don't Which they will, if that's yeah. what they want. You know, well, if it's something that they saying, want. But you're saying right, that, but that, 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 that we are a unified town in terms of what we want. Right. And I don't think that's true. But I'm telling you that's what Stockbridge thinks. Yeah, well, yeah I understand that. And I mean, when people that make those comments that it doesn't really matter because it's all about votes, uh -huh. that's where the contentious feelings come from. Okay. But that's one yeah. person. Or I understand, so but he I seems to think it's a whole lot of people. But, but I think it's important to, and the, the to realize the that that person the point is right. Right. But that's is to help us get by that. Right, but so my question is, if I can... I don't know if I'm allowed to, but sure. go ahead. Um, the people that are on, that are right here. If it looks like the community in Rochester wants a $5.4 million building, if, if that's what they want, will it matter what Stockbridge wants? Yes. Yes. It absolutely does. Okay. I mean, Joanne, I'll set the example. And I appreciate that. And, no, and the, but the, the example of it is, and you've been to plenty of our board meetings. Yes. And you see how this board works. Yes. This board works with consensus, and we listen to each other, and we talk to each other. And um, um, and I may be ignorant of facts, and this is why the building committee, and I'm glad there's people who are professionals like Cricket and this this contractor on there to 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 help with good, us. good thing they're on it yeah well, well I'm just saying just to understand because the engineering thing doesn't make sense to me totally no I know yeah. but so, I'm just saying this is what the uh, feeling and, so, and, and when someone that, sits but, there and says but that's the why thing. would we let you out of this why would we let you do that because obviously it's a financial if it's well I'm saying if it's if it's the will of the community I mean, if, we, if, we, if it's a clear, strong vote that the will of the community of Stockbridge doesn't want this anymore, and it's allowed within the, um, you know, the, the merger agreements at right. that point, then I, I'm not the kind of person who's going right. to say no. Yeah, and the board and then, I don't think the board is the kind of thing that would say, no, you can't do that. Good. I appreciate that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Absolutely. Well, and that's I, and been, I that's been the way that. we've worked. That's I, no, I didn't, but but wait a minute, Joanne. Saying, what happened right. when this when the high school was supposed to be closed here? The, the, or was, would it be closed or would it not? Rochester didn't come together as a town. No. Some people wanted it closed. Yeah, it closed. Some people wanted well, it open. We know what there was a it doesn't matter. Emerged. There was a different of opinion. That that's not saying, you know, all all people vote for one person. No, I understand that. You but can't do that. That's okay. prejudice. But it's That's a big, discriminating. It's a big well, deal. Yeah. No, and, and I understand that. And I think that because that's why uh, it's good that you're more participating. More. And I think it's why we're going to have, you know, the, 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 the discussions that we're talking about and more meetings of the building committee. So, okay. Yes. We're going to move on to the marquee. Yeah. Oh. I'd like to make a motion that we don't... <laughs> Uh, do anything with the marquee until we decide what buildings we're going to be using. Well, there was a proposal to There's the a motion on the table. Do I hear a second? No. Oh, okay. You're right. Just second and then we can discuss whatever. We're going to vote on. I can't second. I put the motion on. Okay, I'll second. Okay, a motion has been made and seconded that the marquee no, be discussed. That the, mar the, 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 the marquee be put away till we decide what building we're doing. <laughs> I couldn't help it. Discussion. Basically. I think this is missing the point. It's not about the marquee, it's about communication. It's about, it's about how does Rochester get the word out on the street, literally, about what's happening at the school. And we have not, in six, eight, a month, a year, come up with a solution for that, and I think that's pretty ridiculous. I do think that the newsletter that we're getting monthly 
it's at the beginning but of the month, it, and there's a calendar on the front that says the activities that are going on. That is very helpful. It, it is, is that going to everybody in the town? No, it's left at the post office, and it goes to all parents. That's not the same as something that gets drive by. I mean, this is yeah. what Mason's point has been that it's 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 a it's it's the most accessible thing. So I just I just sort of feel like we've sort of pushed it aside and pushed it aside and he's made been being good conscience, brought the issue up and brought the issue up and I, I do think I didn't know when my I want to go back to I didn't know when they, we were supposed to go back to school till I drove by Stockbridge. And because I saw it on their marquee. Um, here's what I'll say, Ethan. I know it does feel like that. The dilemma we had is, number one, I get we, it. we're having difficulty getting contractors to respond to us. One finally did. Um, it's going to be in the vicinity of twelve to $1,500 to, to, to put the sign in wherever we put it in. Mm -hmm. um, could be reduced by five or $600 if they can find the old footing. So, Did um, we get approval from the people? Because that was the last uh, thing I remember. No, it's got to go out here. We, there's no place out. So but but, no, but we talked that there was something going to go. Said no. So you said no. Okay. He'll allow a sandwich. I'm sorry, I can't see it. Oh, no, no, it's tough. He'll, <laughs> allow, he'll, he'll allow a small sandwich board. He said we could put that out there anytime we don't have to ask him it. That's all okay. we can put out there. Okay. So our big sign is going to have to be down here somewhere. So the people that we're hoping would get the information, you know, people that don't have young students in school, that don't pick up a newsletter at post office, et cetera, it's unlikely they're going to be driving through here, though they might after the sign gets up and they realize that's where, that's where information is. Um, but it's been a dilemma. It's taken this long because it's not a big job and we couldn't get anybody to respond to us about putting it in. We finally got one person who gave us the quotes. Um, and that's where we are at this point. I, I think Amy's suggestion is a good one. I'm a little bit, I'm a little bit hesitant to spend twelve to fifteen hundred dollars to put a sign up near a building that we may not be in in another year or we may be selling in another year or doing something with in another year. Can we buy a sandwich board? Oh yeah, we can do a sandwich. We have a sandwich board. Can we, we can put stuff up on the sandwich board out there. I'm just, just saying, it in. it's about, as I say, the real issue is about information out there. It's not about, I don't think personally it's about whether the footings of the marquee are on, you know, this property or that property. It's about there being a public face I mean, that's certainly the, this is what Mason's been going on about and that we've heard several times. It's about people. Well, it actually was the marquee. Well, know, I know. The marquee the is the term, but I think, I mean, I think it. the issue, from my point of view, is about information. And, that, and I think, the nice thing about a sandwich board, you take it inside, you change all the letters in there in the storm, and you take it out. I use them for my down at And the property owner was very gracious and said we could put that yep, out there. And that's great. Out. And you can get a decent size. You can get a custom built one of you can, you know, for a lot less than $1,200. Yeah. Any other questions? Good. Just Mason. Nathan. Mason. Oh, that's right. He's coming on camera. That's right. Good boy. Yeah. I'm asking myself right now. Um, going back to when the marquee was taken down, I'm a taxpayer. I'm watching this whole thing go down. It got taken down. It didn't get put back up. It should have been a, a process that should have been done. If this little issue, and I think it's great. Go ahead and put a sign sign out there. Parents conference, December 10th. It's great. But these little things like this, if you can't solve them and you're talking about buildings and you're talking about it, all this other stuff, you've got lost me as a taxpayer. That's you know, I have to question the whole thing. When little the whole things thing can't be taken care of with all this administration from way up there all the way through and all this money and we're supposed to be educating kids but you can't even put up a sign. It just blows well, that me. that might not be the will of this board to put that sign up. You know what? I'm just saying I watch so the whole process. Want, make I'm just saying at, it's do. my opinion as a taxpayer I'm questioning this whole thing as all these other people are leaving the state. I'm starting to question the whole thing. But yeah, it's questioning okay. what what's actually going on in the classrooms and where it's happening. Getting things done. So if you did you come to the last meeting? Did you hear the educational talk last at the last board meeting in Stockbridge? Yeah. 
Yes. Yeah. 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 So that was that was no no no. There was a huge presentation about the initiatives of education. I'm not talking about all the talk talk talk. I'm talking about do do. Wait, talk 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 was, talk was about teaching. I actually loved it. Do you? Yeah. Yeah. But it's still. So, so we're wait, we're so you actually see a conference. We're getting education. We're getting education, we're getting education though. Good. We might not be able to get a marquee up, but we're getting education up. Done. And you don't, well, you don't believe in our education either, though, because we're not doing the environmental yet. Oh, no, no, no. I'm, okay. looking, at, I'm looking all over the state and watching the whole thing collapse, too. But that, that's okay. here and here. Okay, well, that's, that's not here about our time. Our time has just run out. Yeah, I know. Yeah, thank you very much. You're welcome. Uh, we have a motion on the table that's been made and seconded to uh, to uh, uh, put the marquee in storage until uh, such time as we have a, 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 a clearer idea of what building it would go in front of. Can I make an amendment to that? With that, with the understanding that a sandwich board be used to to substitute in the short term. Uh, is that a friendly amendment? Yes. Yes, absolutely. Okay, well, no, no, it's, it's yes. her, it's up to her. Oh, yeah. she, made well, no. the, she made the motion, otherwise you'd have to have a second and you have to vote on it. But she okay. says it's friendly, so you've been accepted. <laughs> well, thank you very much. <laughs> 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 Good. Good. Humility returns. Okay, we have an amended motion that uh, the uh, marquee stay in storage until such time as we have a, a clearer idea of the building it would go in front of, and that in the meantime, a sandwich board be used to communicate all pertinent information and be placed on the uh, 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 Dandelion Acres, not Dandelion Acres, Dandelion Acres, a Butters property. The, 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 the Butters property, and uh, that the board uh, expresses its gratitude for being allowed to use his, his uh, lawn. All those who favor signify the second. Aye. 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 You didn't have to second it because it was a friendly oh. amendment. That was a parliamentary <laughs> test. I know, I was going to say that. Okay, 9.6, great configurations. Okay, I just wanted to bring to the board's attention um, a con the configurations meaning how are we going to design classroom levels, grade levels for next year. We have a little, uh, it's actually a good problem to solve. Um, Is there something about this? At the Rochester campus, right now we have 14 three-year-olds. If they all move forward next year, they'll become 14 four-year-olds in our preschool program. We are licensed for 15. We probably could get licensed to 18. So that would only leave room for four three-year-olds to come into our preschool program. That would be a dilemma for us because I'm anticipating we would have more than four three-year-olds. As Lindy said earlier, we're going to start our child find earlier. We're going to start right after Christmas vacation to try and surface how many three-year-olds are there that would be interested in coming to our preschool. Child find? Child, 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 child find, find. yeah. <laughs> it's, um, it's so we would ha we have identified three possible solutions to this problem. And I call it a good problem because it's because we have too many kids. And that is a good problem. Yeah, I like those problems. Right. The other piece to this, let me add before I go forward, is that at, currently in Ro at the Rochester campus we have four four-year-olds. So that means we would have a kindergarten of four children next year if we didn't change our configurations. This year we have a single grade kindergarten. Next year, if we maintain that single grade kindergarten, there'd only be four youngsters in it. So that's obviously not something that we can do. So there really are sort of three solutions, and in no particular order. Um, one of them would be to license, uh, get another room licensed in the high school to run a second preschool program. I personally don't support that because I think for a number of reasons, but the most important one in my thinking is that it would isolate a group of children over there, and I'm not particularly keen on doing that. Um, we could have a... These are specific kindergarten? No, we'd get licensed at another preschool. Um, we could have a configuration that has a pre-KK, so some of our preschoolers would be with our kindergartners. That would be some of the that some 14. of the four year olds, some of the fourteen, okay. and the rest would be with the three year olds. So we would have a three four year old like program, and we would have a pre K K program. Okay. We will have some licensing issues there if we do that because we would need a second licensed preschool teacher. We could get an emergency license. We could get a, a temporary license uh, for one of our current staff members, and then they would a provisional license, rather not a temporary license. And then What's they would the have X number of 
a years to finish the requirements to get their preschool. How much more would that cost? Uh, Salary wise. Wouldn't cost us anything more. It would cost the teacher as she goes. She goes through. No, I don't mean the education. I mean having another licensed teacher. It wouldn't be another licensed teacher. It would be oh. one of our current staff. So we're not adding a teacher under any of these. So situations. you don't pay them more if they become a licensed. No, they're already licensed. We're just they're getting licensed for a different thing. Oh, thank you. thank you. The third option would be to have, depending on how many kids surface in our child count, would be to have all of our three-year-olds from both communities attend school at the Stockbridge campus. That has some issues because I think some of our kiddos barely get transportation here. It's hard for the families to get them here. I think it may just be too much to get them to Stockbridge. But those are the three options that we have. Again, one of them I think is a non-option, getting another room license in the high school. That's not something I support so, for a myriad of reasons. So doing a pre-KK, do we have to have the K room licensed then? As a preschool, yes. I don't think that would be a problem. The biggest hurdle on getting a room license is always bathrooms, and there's two bathrooms right there. So I don't think that would be an issue at all. Okay. And the second license would be our would be the current kindergarten or or not necessarily a, 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 a teacher um, would need to get a, a, a provisional correct all of our teachers now are certified K through six okay so the person that would get the provisional license would have two years and she then would become certified pre K through six would we need um, would the population be such that there would be a, a required second uh, aid in the room at the pre K um, that would depend on numbers. The big, the big unknown here is how many three-year-olds right. we will have coming into our program. We'll I'm, making the, I'm making the assumption, and I, I think it's probably an accurate one, the board has always taken the stand of, uh, you want us to make the program accessible to anybody who wants to come to it. Yes. You want all the kids here. Yep. That's the assumption that we are working on. Now, it may split itself out. There may be a couple people who um, could very easily drive to Stockbridge, and they would be willing to take a couple, or two or three kids might go down to Stockbridge, and the rest might stay here. That's sort of the thinking that we This have. is what the and child, used to, child find will tell you. Tell you right. It starts with knowing how many where, kids are we talking about. They'll tell you about. where they are, because if they're down that way, yeah, 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 gotcha. there might be some place enough that way that they wouldn't mind at all going to Stockbridge. We just issued a child find advertisement for special education. So, I mean, that it's it goes out the papers and say, please identify, please let us know if your children goes out to all of our ten. Are they required to do that, or is it just by voluntary? A special ed is required to do. It. We're, we no, I mean, to are they required to respond? Are adults, parents required to respond? They're not required, but most do. I mean, they're not required to respond, but there's truancy laws that are required to have a kid to go to school. Right. But, but, but only K through 12, right? Six, as far as six Only years. six years old. Kindergarten is not required. Got you. Okay. Um, what's your recommendation? Um, I don't have one right yet. Okay. I think because we need to see how many three-year-olds we're going to have both in Stockbridge and in Rochester what to see you, what makes sense. What would you like from us? I just wanted to let the board have oh, the okay, information. Gotcha. Thank, you. Thank you. Excellent. Cool. Excellent. Excellent. Well, let's move on. No, no, no. I'm sorry. I have a question about grade configuration. So I understand that for um, pre-K and kindergarten. Um, what about the older grades? I know. Oh yes, we have. Do we have our configurations? Not yet, but there will have to be some changes. For example, yeah. our our second, third grade, we have a second, a two, three combined yeah. this year. Next year, if we were to have a two, three combined, it would be twenty-seven. That's years. what I was. Woo. Yeah, that's what I was thinking. So we can't maintain. Two, three. So problem. basically, our configurations are pretty much going to be changing from preschool up to six. Yeah. Together, the second and third well, graders. You know what I mean? This is this is this is this is where uh, having a policy on on uh, 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 the, the, the grade uh, configuration and, and classroom use. I, I would I would respectfully disagree on that a little bit, Carl. I think it's better to keep that as an administrative procedure because you have far more flexibility. Yep. You can actually look at the kids and say, okay, this year these 14 right. go together Changes. marvelously. Right. You look at a different 14 and it's like, there's no way we're putting these two groups together. Yeah. What was your question? Though? Right. No, my, I was, the, 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 the policy isn't about having you know, single grades or whatever. It's the, 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 the policy is about um, just understanding, you know, as you say, that we're going to have these fluid configurations, you know, having, having in there fluidity about which campus kids are at and whose decision that is. 
I see what you're saying. So yeah. that's that's what we were talking about. So that, I'm sorry, maybe I was confusing yeah. in September. But that's what I was. That's what I was. What I'm looking for before we have a problem where we have to say really it's going to be good for two kids or three 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 fourth graders to come down to to Stockbridge, or we've got too many fifth graders, or we've got too many you know whatever they should go up there. Having something that that, that, that already lets people know that we can make that educational decision is important. I didn't understand your point. You're going to do that. Yes, that that is important. I think the other thing to say is that both the policy uh, and Lindy and I have been talking about this, and we'll be talking a little bit more about this. At both of our campuses, the numbers are getting to where we may be looking at some kind of wonky conversations, uh, wonky configurations, sort of configurations that would be okay, but not great for kids. And I think we have to just put that realization on the table. Yes. Your example about three or four kids is a, is a good example. Um, that has its own challenges when you have a group of kids at a grade that few. And, right. you know, when we look at the possibility of having more three grade levels with one teacher, that has issues too. Well, and again, I just think it's important that we have, at least I'm speaking for me, I, I don't know what everyone else here thinks, but in my opinion, you know, the, the, the kid getting the proper education and being in the proper cohort and the proper, and the, and the proper classroom is more important than whether that kid lives in Stockbridge and goes to a Stockbridge classroom or lives in Rochester and goes to a Rochester classroom. I think one of the things we've talked about in our meeting all along was the general flexibility of having two campuses. And we've always, always in the past, we've had, when we've had kids that have classed with a teacher or families that have classed with a teacher, we've made, you know, there, I, I, I can think about a half dozen times that I've had a kid come from Rochester to Stockbridge or go from Stockbridge to Rochester because of discipline or, or whatever sorts of, sorts of reasons, but they've been kind of one-offs that have been situational. I think that having a policy or a way that we can make sure that families understand that, you know, we are, we are, we are, we are, the board is committed to giving their child the best education at the best place for that child, and that does not require, that, that doesn't go to the child's town residence. Yeah, Chelsea, and I don't want to say the policy. Like I'd that like partially. to make a we have comment on that. Chelsea, just Chelsea, just because my kid, I have my child, one of those kids in a really small class that we probably would be talking about moving to a different campus. Um, I think my kid would, I mean, she probably would be okay eventually, but like, Rochester is like, like this is like where she's been her whole mm -hmm. time. So it would be very hard for her to adjust to being taken out and then maybe the next year being put back in. So uh, that's where well, I Yeah, no, and I, 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 I understand, understand what you're saying. I'm, I'm, trying to say that, I'm not trying to say that, that it's, it's, it should be like a classroom count. You know, that it should be, you know, we need to, to, to have classroom sizes. I'm just saying that it's a possibility. Again, no, you're having a possibility that we're, that, that we're doing that and we're, you know, again, talking about the, 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 the child's educational needs. I would have to I, agree with Megan on that yeah. as well. Yeah. I, it's What's not just the education. I right? think um, the education Big is now. around social emotional. I can't imagine snapping our fingers right now. Is it ideal? No, but we're really creative with it with our small group sure. in Stockbridge right now. And and I inherited that creativity. I'm not gonna take any credit yeah. for it at all. I really did. It's uh, been a wraparound support by my teaching staff. Um, by having someone that teaches some other grade levels so we can split some things out to meet some educational needs of that smaller group. Um, I can't imagine looking those kids in the face for those parents in the face because we snap our fingers and say, we have this policy and now we're going to move. Yeah, so I understand what you're saying. Like, yeah, I don't think too. you know those smaller numbers are ideal by any means, but I can't look kids who have traveled together and been together that long in the face and say, next year, we're going to send you over there because we created this. So I just, I see both sides of it, and I want us to be really careful how we do yeah. it, but it, we do need to acknowledge that we're lucky in Stockbridge because we have this person who is a classroom teacher and another, and partially a librarian, because she's pulling out so we can split some things mathematically or literacy-wise to meet that need of a three-grade level classroom. I don't know if we could do that if we didn't have that extra person. Sure. Well, no, and I, I'm, 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 I'm sorry. I don't mean to. I don't mean to say that I think we need to. We need to have you know some kind of top-down 
a, a mandate. I'm just, as we have these conversations, we talk about, well, maybe we'll have to send some of the kids You're down the to start. You're the chair, Carolyn, you always bring it up. You're the chair of all of these things, and you always bring it up that it would be good to have bigger groups or it would be good to combine them. And I think people look to I you, Carl. I, I maybe I am. I, maybe I, I am, and I, I apologize if I am. But I think, the, I think it, you got to be careful about it because people look at you as the chair and you're running the meetings, and it always ends up the same way. And I'm just, I'm just going to, that's how it comes across to me. I understand, and I, and I, I really appreciate what you said, because you our seem kids like have been in Rochester forever, so yeah. now you know how some of the Stockbridge people but, feel. But See, I think this if, we really are, never, if we really are one school with two campuses, then I, as I think all options have to be on the table for our administrators to consider. If they see it as a useful, and these people, right. these people are not going to be willy-nilly in their decision making about, oh, we're just going to send everybody down there. I don't think they would. Well, I, I trust them. If and I think don't. that they would know which kids would be okay with it. And sure. Oh, absolutely. Right. But also, can absolutely. I speak to the, the preschoolers that have been, have a new class? Their class is the Stockbridge students and the Rochester yeah, students. Yeah, yeah. They go down That's to the Stockbridge so is. often. But that is their classroom down there too. They have their favorite spots that they go to. They know the toys down there, the educational stuff. They they know their friends down there. This is the ideal. And that is the gen that is who we're dealing with by the time we get. Anywhere. I mean, maybe it will okay. be different for the younger kids. Yeah, but I agree. Well, that's what I'm saying. I those younger think kids are already. I, I, I'm going to apologize because I hijacked the the, the conversation as we started talking about class so and what we're saying. So, so if I can summarize it this way, I, I do think, Carl, that that. You made a you made a good point. Uh, to Joanne's point, I think it's right. I think you made you a good point chair, too, Carl. And, and that's not what I meant. The chair. What I think we are slowly moving toward, and I would feel remiss if I didn't share this very bluntly with the board. I think we're slowly moving toward. I don't think it's this year. I don't think it's next year. We're slowly moving toward that place where what we want may be in conflict with the reality of what we have. And that is declining student numbers in smaller and smaller groups of kids. And how we resolve that is how, why we start with this community building vision, what do we really want for our kids, what's really important. So I think we're on a good timeline. I didn't mean to bring up anything contentious tonight, but I wanted the board to know that we have this situation in Rochester and we'll come up with the best solution we can once we have all the facts. And then you will just make it work wonderfully for kids because that's what the teachers that you hire do. But we are in that place where we aren't going to be able to just continue status quo. And I think we've, we've talked in the past about reaching out um, kind of PR to other towns and I think that that's where we want to um, focus, yeah, focus on it. if our numbers are going down. We can we get kids from these other schools yeah. to start? Well, we, we, we briefly talked about that in the building uh, committee meeting. Uh, was basically, you know, what is the pool of students in Granville and Hancock and Pittsfield? You know, how many kids are, 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 are in our area? Do you and know, Barnard's going to vote. Barnard's going to, the, the people that we're trying to make Barnard independent are, are losing that fight terribly. They're going to they're, they're, they're gonna have a vote next week or a couple weeks to make Barnard just give up being an independent district and just join the elementary district. So we're not, you know, the, the idea that maybe Barnard would become an independent school or a choice town isn't going to happen. I think we have an example up the road ways, and if I get this wrong, correct me, um, where we perhaps don't want to be. There was a vote by a couple of schools up north of Middlebury, and they voted to keep both of their elementary schools open. That's what the communities really wanted. Addison and Harrisburg. Yep. Yep. And then the following week, Monday of the following week in the newspaper, came the reality that they initially said, you have to cut a million dollars out of your budget to stay out of the country. Then it was really purposed as $470,000. Now, they're not sure they can do that and have much left in their school. So that's all I meant when I said the reality of what we, the, the, the We don't want to go into the penalty. We recognize that that's really powerful to both communities, and I understand why financially, because look what it did this summer. Well, we want to be but, ahead of it and have no right. we're just trying it out. <laughs> yeah, we're trying it out. <laughs> <laughs> Um, I had too much to thank you.
Don't get married. All right. So the uh, the letter we need to approve very quickly. Yes. Okay. I um I don't believe this really. I don't know. I believe that the um trustees of public funds would be more inclined to um, donate to our school budget okay. if we could um, show them how those funds could be used academically. Sure. Or not just um, uh, operating expenses. I think that's like a big turn yep. off. Oh, no, um, that's fine. That's the budget. That's the, that's, the, that's the type of letter that we'd send to the stock report. It was just a formal kind of, you know, here's our request for the $9,000. Right. And so I took um, that and said, they start yeah. to get 9,000, you should yeah. get 13,500. And I, I think your explanation, I mean, that's nice to see, well, like, why we're asking, but I think if we could jazz it up a little bit more sure. with more, um, you know, academic, academically, how we could use the money. Um, how much I don't know if we also want to. 13,500 would be, would be 60. What would you use it for, Bonnie? Well, and I don't know if you want me to, I'll maybe take this opportunity to just kind of discuss how the um, trustees of public funds are different in both of our towns. Okay. The, the trustees of public funds in Stockbridge that um, gives the school district $9,000 is giving the school district $9,000 of money that was endowed to the school. Correct. The trustees of public funds that we're going to ask for money do not hold any of the Rochester endowment funds. The money is money that was endowed to the town, and we were just asking the, the town if they'll be willing to give us some money. Does the school have public funds? Yes, the school has their own public funds. And who funds. holds them then? What? Who holds them? Austin and Treasurer. And I need you to sign another, another <laughs> thing here because I, I didn't get you, I, I've been, it's been all, it's very hard trying to be able to talk to these people about our accounts because I'm not on the account. So I need you to sign one more piece of paperwork tonight. Okay. Um, I can but do that. See, there, I, there okay. is um, so the school does have have endowments that some of them have certain restrictions on them, but we can work with them. Now that we, once we are able to access and understand and talk to the to the banks about how much money is in there and 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 hmm. such. Um, we will be able to have access to some of those funds. So I just want to explain that there's, when we're asking the trustees of public funds in the town of Rochester for some money, we're asking Grandma if she's willing to give us a gift of some money. Okay, so that's, that's interesting because the way I had it explained in Stockbridge is that the trustees of public funds are the trustees of the public funds. They hold all the public funds. Right. Um, they manage the, you know, they, they, they manage the gifts. They manage the sinking funds. Everything. They're the trustees of all the public funds. And so, you know, I'm assuming that we were asking for you know, the, the same sort of thing. Right. Um, so okay, that's it. So so there's there's okay. Right. So certainly, if you want to turn it into much more of a PR letter, that'd be great. Um, I would. I'll, I'll, I can. Uh, you, you can just type it over. Or I can send you the document with that in there. So whatever you want. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah. Absolutely. Um, and just thank you for taking this on. Mm -hmm. It's been many months that yes. you've been working on this. Yeah. So thank so you. So one of the things that I had to send out during the audit process was a letter to financial institutions in our area asking them to identify if they held any accounts on behalf of our school district. Great, did you find any? I haven't gotten any response yet. Okay. So that's one of the things I'll follow up with the auditors on when we come back. I do know one of the things I did find is that Stockbridge still has four open bank accounts at Mascoma. Mm -hmm. That I need to have a conversation with the Stockbridge <laughs> town clerk because she is the only person that has access to those and I and believe those book? funds should have been closed and transferred nice. to the Rochester <laughs> Stockbridge. So that is, I am also working on some of this in conjunction with what you were doing. But I do know that several of your specific funds, right, can't do it the next four days. <laughs> right, I'm quarantined. Uh, it is part of also the audit process. So yeah. hopefully something will also <laughs> coincide with what you're doing too. So. Okay. Yeah, and I, I'm, I'm not doing all of those individual bank accounts. It was yeah. specifically the endowments. Right. There's specific endowments that yeah. I'm able to track. Yep. So. 
But I'm with you. It's grueling to get. I mean, as the business manager, they won't even talk to me. Well, you can't talk to you. Okay. 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 A special meeting day. When do you expect a special meeting to be? Business manager that's going to give us the budget at the special meeting to look at? So I would say potentially give me two additional dates in January if I can't get it for the January 7th meeting. Okay. Um, is, is, there the is there a certain day of the week that is, I mean, we don't need to stick to a Tuesday, do we? No. Well, how about the 14th? Is the 14th available? Yeah, the 14th. Is the 14th is the um, Sharon and Stratford yep. meeting at 5.30. Okay, so you tell us. What so Mondays or Thursdays? 13th, January 13th. 13th on Monday? I can do the 13th. 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 6.30. January. Okay. Does that work? Monday. Yep. Where? If necessary. Right. If, we if. said 6.30? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Well, let's see. The next board meeting will be at Stockbridge, so the special one we can put at Rochester. Rochester again. 13. Okay. 6.30 on the 13th at Rochester, is that what we're saying? Yep, yeah. if needed. And then did you want another one in January? Just in case. Okay. Um, and you Monday said Mondays or Thursdays? Monday. Yeah, those are the ones that you don't have board meeting nights already. Okay. I can do Thursdays. We might have negotiations. No, the Monday will be the, 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 the 13th. 13th. Oh, the third, the I can do the 23rd. The full board is the 27th. Okay. How about on the Thursday, the 23rd? No, we are March to get your food. So I'd like to get you like Thursday the 23rd. Or Thursday the 16th, but if she can't, if she doesn't have something for the 13th. Yeah, let's go to the 23rd. I can do that. Okay. Thursday. So these are tentative if needed. So that would be a stop A special meeting for budget if needed is what I wrote down. Yeah. Okay. 6.30. Yeah. Stockbridge. Yeah. Wonderful. Look at us. That's good. <laughs> Thank you. I appreciate you being <coughs> understanding on that. So, I believe. No, we still have public comment. We have more public comment. Yes. Yeah, more public comment. Okay. That's right. I just have a quick thing. Um, with the handouts that you gave, um, it looks like if somebody wanted to submit a petition. The date for that is 319, but the uh, reports are going to be mailed to the printer on 313. So if a petition is submitted, it's going to not meet the deadline. And I think this may be a very important issue this year. Yeah, good point. We're going to have to look at that 13. You have to that out the, 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 the communication between the two pages, I think. Right, but how, they can, how can they petition it? Well, that would be if they want right, well, I think if they want special articles considered during your right. meeting. The community would have to petition you for that. So that's what that's for. Right, so we can't, so the, the, the so thing on, but it's... Two things. Last day to submit petition. So if you had a petition... Right, right, ignore this page, ignore this page, Joanne. This is the draft from, this is the draft. Where it says the 13th is the mailing date, that can't be right. Okay. Because it, it, you're absolutely right. And if you look at the, the thing from Marilyn, she is saying that the uh, the warning itself doesn't have to be done till the till the fifth right. um, of, of April. Between the 26th of March for the 40-day time frame, or is it no later than the fifth? Right. No, everyone's so this their March 13th. Date oh, no, is right. This March 13th. This March 13th day is. Wait, March 13th should be April. Should be April 13th. Okay. April 13th. Ah, okay. Does that make sense? April 13th. And the only other thing that I would no, say no, is no. Um, on the, the second language, I understand there's a time restriction, but it is something that um, was kind of uh, presented to us um, before the merge as something that people wanted. We could have it, possibly, if we merged. So if it's a time thing, maybe the competitive schools that have the second language, maybe we could see what their schedules are like. I know that Killington has a second language, and it's very popular, and the parents love it, and the kids love it, so we could see how they do it, maybe, in, in, in for certain grades. It doesn't have to be the whole school, but maybe some grades. Um, that's just a suggestion. No, it's a really good one, actually. Yeah. And I do 
you say that when I talk to families who don't send their kids to our schools, that a language is usually like, oh, do you have a language? And that's so we've made the case for yeah. there. I would love to hear, love to hear academically what the research is. Is it useful? It's extremely useful, and, and as a matter of fact, bilingual children, you all have executive functioning now and organizing and things like that. Bilingual children do better than monolingual children because they learn to converse. They have to change their brain knowledge. They learn to converse in many different languages. They, for example, the people at my little house, they speak English. When they're at home, they speak Spanish. And those kids have to translate and go back and forth. That changes your whole brain. So bilingual children, in their executive functioning, they do far superior to monolingual. Yeah. I think it's also our world now. I mean, that's yeah, the research yeah. of the academics. This is, this is a global economy. I mean, you know, and this is what our children are going to have to have. My, my granddaughter gets Mandarin now in fourth grade because there's so much Chinese. So yes, I think it's essential. And when they go to the next level, seventh grade, wherever they go, most of the children have already gotten some type of second language, but our kids don't. And, and not only that, but they also the research showed that they should get it young. Yeah. They yeah, should yeah, be yeah. starting in oh, kindergarten. Yeah. Yep. They were they having oh, yeah. last they were starting in seventh grade. Pre-K were doing it when the, the, oh, yeah. the high school teacher was um, doing bilingual. Yeah, they lapped it up. Okay. They were lapping it up. All right. That's okay. all I have You're standing up. Yes, because we've, we've had our last public comment. Oh, we have? She said, she, she said that's all she has to say. Okay. We've talked about our future meetings. I'm going to stand up, look firmly into the camera, and thank everyone for coming. Our next meeting will be January 7th at 6.30 p.m. in uh, the Stockbridge campus. Uh, in between them, have a Merry Christmas, Happy Holidays, everybody. Thank you. Thank you.